an Alter Network production. Fires, caught, at the 25, still on his feet, McIntyre, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, 5, gone! Touchdown, Auburn! out to play today you know they, they don't have a bad football team but the thing that we did is we didn't mess around we went out there and took it to them just like we were supposed to have done a lot of people said a lot of things about you the last couple of weeks talked about you pointed fingers at you but as long as we stay together it doesn't make any difference i mean we can accomplish what we want to accomplish this is a good football team we still got a lot of room for improvement we've got a lot of good leadership like we like uh we, you heard thursday night the third day I mean, that was a great talk, and it's exactly what we needed. And everybody got to play. That's what it's all about. Next week we come back, we work hard for three days, and we'll give you next weekend off until Sunday, and then we're going to have a good time coming back and getting ready for the next game. But again, we've got to get better. We take one step farther every day. We got a little bit better against Georgia Tech. We didn't win the game. We got a little bit better. We got a lot better today. We got some confidence, and that's what we needed. So good job, everybody. You played hard. You made things happen. And that's what you got to do. You got to make it happen. And that's the kind of, kind of football team we're going to have. But uh, proud of you. We're going to get our stuff on. It won't take long. We'll get on the bus. We'll get you home so you have a little bit, ha have a little bit of time off Saturday night. <laughs> Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Sure does feel good to hear them singing in the dressing room. It really does. It's the first time this year, and hopefully it's a lot more. But uh, what a great day and a great crowd. We, we had over 60, 70 percent of the crowd here at Vanderbilt Stadium. You know, it's tough to win on the road in this league, but that really helps. And, you know, that's true Auburn folks showed up and pulled us through. Yeah, they had the orange on, and you could tell that it was an overwhelming crowd. They were in this section, this section, and this section. They were all about. Yeah, they spread them out so they couldn't get, uh, you know, really vocal at, at times. But, uh, you know, it was good to have everybody here. It was good to get off on a, on a good start in the conference. Uh, we played really well, and uh, I was really uh, nervous about offensively, you know, how about we'd, how we'd start on the uh, road in the conference play, and we started out slow, but our defense held us in there until we got going. And the confidence factor was really important. There's nothing like it. I mean, the emotion, enthusiasm, and confidence in this business, in, in college football, is, is what makes or breaks you. And, you know, I just hadn't seen that emotion until this week, and our seniors took over. You know the leadership roles, which uh, you know, you know, beginning of the week, and uh, I knew going into this game we were ready to play. Whether we we're going to win or not, I didn't know, but I knew we'd play a lot better than what we played. Let's go to the dressing room and talk to some of the players. Uh, you know, I feel real comfortable. You know, uh, I'm comfortable with the teammates I have around me. You know, we just need that one thing to make us click. And, you know, I think today we started clicking, and uh, you know, right now, you know, we, it was one game down, but you know, we're still on a mission for others. I want to hear somebody say touchdown off. We ain't, we ain't heard, we ain't heard, we ain't heard this year. So I just wanted to get my all, you know, and we executed the play. So you know, things went out, well, things went the right way. We just believe, man, believe in each other. You know what I'm saying? It's the third day. Christ rose on the third day. We gonna rise on the third day. And this third ball game for us, and we rose to the cage. Um, it's been a long time coming, man. You know, we came in with great intensity. You know, to come in and play hard and just try to execute. We try to get ourselves back to um, our establishment point. And um, we did a good job executing. Our coaches did a great job putting us in key situations. And it was just all around great effort. We're back here, post game time at Vanderbilt Stadium after a 45 to 7 Auburn win over the University of Vanderbilt. Another great thing about this comeback win today was all the players you played. We played almost everybody on the bench. And we've been really needing to get guys like Josh Sullivan in the game because he's one play away from you know, from a turned ankle with Jason to be, be our guy. And it was good to see him come in and have some success, you know, not just play, but all of our guys came in and played well off the bench, and our kicking game was excellent. And it, it looked really good, you know, to, to have a mixture of first team and second team players in there and, and playing well and playing hard. Okay, you're going to see one of the great defensive performances as we look at the highlights of the first half. Big switch, coach. Win the toss. Win the toss for the first time this year. Elected to defer, put them on 
on offense, and that's the way our defense came to play. These are three straight plays to open the game for the defense. And, you know, we just we swarmed tackles. You know, they, they had the most diverse offenses we've seen all year. They mix everything up, throwing screens, running draws, running option plays, and I tell you, our defensive coaches did a good job adapting all week long, getting us a good game plan. Here's Jason back on offense. We're, we had to back them up. They came out like everybody else and put eight, nine in the box. We're throwing it deep. The court name got a little pass interference, kind of put us in a hole here. But uh, at least we made a statement. Here we come back on on defense and uh, three straight defensive plays yeah, again. Three three straight plays holding without a first down. And here's what what we were worried about: the little option play and missed a tackle by Carlos Danzer there. But we still got the great pursuit coming from inside out. Third and eight. Third and eight. Uh, here's a backside pressure out of uh, uh, Carlos Dansby. Almost causes a fumble, and uh, we get the uh, uh, ball down and and make sure that they have to go a long ways. Here's a, another fumble. They throw the bean bag, call a fumble. We get the ball, but they don't give it to us. We still haven't figured that one out. Here's a little bootleg pass to Anthony Nix. He's going to have to be a big play guy for us as we go down the road. Uh, he's got great speed and hands. We've got to get him more involved in the offense. Here's a Cadillac going inside and getting a little room uh, for a running game. You don't get anything out of this long drive, but the uh, offense has come around. You well, know, yeah, we, 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 we made, kind of made a a statement on this drive of how we could mix it up and run Missed inside and outside. Ever. Missed the field goal, a uh, short one, but we come back and, and get the ball, and Courtney Taylor, one of our clutch receivers, makes a great catch. Here's a run by Ronnie Brown. Uh, just a step away, step away, and got a personal foul penalty there on them piling on. Here we drop back, and Jason throws it to the wrong guy here. We've got to be able to pick up the right receiver. They, they double cover. Uh, ben Obenu, we should have thrown it to the other side. Here's a quick throw, and look at this run right here. Uh, just missed tackles by Vanderbilt and Jairus McIntyre for the first touchdown of the year, and we break the ice. Look at this again and watch the uh, lick he takes and stays on his feet. Three guys had a chance at him, and he avoids it. Well, he, he's worked real hard in the offseason. He's one of our senior leaders, and you just can't bring him down by hitting him high. You've got to you've got to wrap up on Jairus. He's going to be a big play guy for us this year. Here's a, another fumble defense causes they get it back and uh, we got them back down deep inside their territory here's Cutler running a draw he really ran this draw play against Ole Miss real well and our speed turned it uh, turned it back Auburn headed for another score as Vanderbilt has to give up the ball again well look Jason sets his feet throws it downfield to Silas Daniels and it's good to see us set our feet and have a little bit more time to protect and fourth throw the and ball three. fourth and three we go for it throw a quick slant to Jairus again big first down down on the 15-yard line now. 15-yard line and a, and a draw play. Watch Cadillac go inside, go outside. How many times have we seen him do this? And this, we're starting to run, run like the old football team that we, we should be. Here's a big play inside to Carnell over the top and our second touchdown of the year. First rushing touchdown, which will be many for this coming season. Taking it in through the air. Offensive line is doing a lot better job. Here we come back defensively and watch the pressure inside out. And uh, another sack, DeMarco McNeil. Here are the little flare pass that they, they're really good at. But we've got to break down, make the tackle, cause the fumble there. I think Will Herring from Opelika gets that, that fumble. And watch it here again. Watch Carlos, Carlos, Carlos Dansby. Grabs the arm, flips it out. There's Will Herring coming over the top, getting the, getting the fumble. Here we come back. Brandon Jacobs in the ball game. Everybody's been looking forward to seeing him, and we got him in the game. And... Uh, he makes a statement also, running the ball inside and outside. Third there. Down on the goal line now, but a couple of hits inside. Uh, can't get it in, so it's time getting down toward the end of the half. I kick the field goal, and Auburn goes in to the dressing room. Coach, 17 to nothing. That was, let me read you a couple of stats, Coach. Two first downs for Vanderbilt. Uh, total offensive plays for Vanderbilt, 23. Total yards, 55. They never gave them any hope while the offense was getting its confidence back. Yeah, and, and that's exactly what the doctor ordered. We, we, we knew we had a good defense, but we hadn't played the way that we should have, even defensively, by going up and just stopping people on three and out and giving our offense more chances and, you know, until they learn you know, the, the, you know, how we need to play this season. So uh, that was a great performance. Linebackers, D-line, the secondary, just... You know, we're swarming the football. We weren't going to let them run it. We weren't going to let them throw it. And they've got a good offensive football team. Okay. 
be a football player nowadays, you have to train year-round, and the Auburn off-season program is one of the best. We have a report on that for you. While the summer months are generally a quiet time on the plains, the same cannot be said about Auburn football. For the team, summer means extensive daily workout sessions with free weights and cardio to prepare for the weekly grind of the upcoming season. We have a choice. We come at 6 in the morning. Uh, we just come at 3 in the evening, so <laughs> you take your pick. <laughs> so a lot of guys still be sick. We try to beat the heat, you know, wake up about 5.30 to get over here. Once the workout starts, we warm up. Then we usually some, do some type of conditioning. We use some gases or some um, speed type work. Um, then we come in and we come directly to the weight room. And we have maybe an hour, hour, 15 minute weight workout, either upper body or lower body. Um, it's pretty simple. We have weight sheets and just follow the chart. Whichever workout session players opt for, they can count on one constant standard. First of all, they're hard. <laughs> Uh, you know, it, 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 it's pretty good work. It's a good workout. You know, we, we out here sometimes, two to three hours, you know. Uh, it's pretty good. A lot of guys who come in in the morning, so, you know, it's interesting that to see out there, you know, everybody's working, uh, cheering one another on. So, you know, it, it, it's a good time for us to come in in the morning and work out, you know, get that team back in the field, you know, because it's going to be like that on the field. Get down nice and long. We got two sets of eight. Two sets of eight. Known as Coach Yox to the team, Kevin Yoxel, Auburn's head strength and conditioning coach since 99, knows how to push players to the limit both physically and mentally. The kids talk about me working hard. They actually work themselves hard. You know, I tell them, I tell them basically what to do and, and what kind of tempo we want to have for that particular day, and they, they always seem to answer the call. You know, it's a grind. I mean, I don't think people really realize what a grind it is for collegiate students, student athletes nowadays. It's a, it's a full-time deal. A lot of these kids don't get the opportunity to go home except for maybe a long weekend. Whether it's free weights, agility drills, cardio, or the daunting hill, the goal remains the same for Auburn football. Hard work off the field to produce a winning product on the field. 17 nothing at the half. Feeling good, but not uh, totally convinced that that's enough. Uh, you never know in this in, in college football and the way they can throw the ball you knew we had to go out and score some more points and uh, you know we got the ball open in the, you know, the half and uh, we didn't do anything with it and they took it and scored and kind of made us uh, wonder whether you know we were going to be in a dogfight or not but we came back and answered and as we see on the tape here you know that was kind of what the what the doctor ordered and what we needed. Let's take a look. Auburn gets the ball but can't move on its first series. Here's the defense. They haven't changed, though. Well, they're attacking our two deep covers, throwing the tight end down the middle, do a good job throwing the catch, and here's a play that, you know, just just uh, you know, gets to you sometimes. It's not a well-thrown ball, and probably usually a well underthrown ball is not very good for the defense, and they come up with seven points. But uh, what I was proud about was right here. We come back offensively and to make things happen. We open up. We get They get eight men in the box. We throw a little play action to Anthony Mix makes a good run after a catch and uh, here's what happens to you when you gamble to stop the run you got man-to-man -man coverage on receivers and we're gonna get a lot of that this year and it's good to see Jarius McIntyre make a play against man coverage for a touchdown and people keep doing it to us sooner or later they'll have to pay watch him on the sidelines watch him tightrope this to the sideline great That's move right. and open field and right there good good decision out of Devin uh, Rumi should do not to clip and uh, you know, we're going to start getting more and more of these big plays. Jarris' old daddy, Cedric, is smiling somewhere. Smiling somewhere, probably in Tampa. <laughs> Here's a play action. Good pressure from our linebackers, underthrown. Again, it's hard to throw that ball with pressure. Here's a great sack by by uh, uh, Brett Eddins. And, uh, but we cause a fumble, and we get it. So uh, here we come back, and Ronnie Brown running inside. Good blocking up front by the right side. Marcus McNeil and uh, Monrico Crittington, Danny Lindsay. Here's another good block to the weak side by Mark Perra and Troy Reddick. We get it down to the one-yard line. And yeah, let him take it in because he did the work. Yeah, uh, you know, here's what we call a thunder set, blocking down inside and try to go over the top. And you can see a replay of this. Watch, everybody's legs are cut. Their, their linebacker can't get up in the air to stop him, and Ronnie Brown's a load. Here's a shot of our fans and our band. They had great support, uh, even coming off of a slow start. But... Uh, they stayed with us. Here's a good play by Travis Williams, a linebacker. We cause another fumble. We actually get this one, but for some reason the official called it down. And uh, here we come back again. 
Going it down the middle, Cooper Wallace from Nashville, Tennessee. We had eight players from Nashville on the team. They all uh, made plays in this game to help us win. Here's a reverse. Good, good job by our defense. Mayo style staying at home from Birmingham, Alabama. Here's Jarris McIntyre on a little pressure on the punt. But here's uh, Trey Smith's best return of the year. And we're going to have more and more of these. Watch how his quickness getting up the field. He one will guy. Feel the ball, coach. He'll he, get I don't think he's fair caught one all year long. I mean, they're trying to kick away from him, which is a good sign in some ways. Here they come back and throw Kevin Hobbs. Uh, Young, young player coming out, up with a big interception. Watch how he breaks on the ball right here. Carl Stanzi almost knocks it down. Bob had a great game. No, he did have a great game. He's, he's played work good all year long. And here we come back. Josh Sullivan, backup quarterback, from first completion of his career, and he's going to have many. Courtney Taylor on the out route. Good to see Josh get some playing time. All of our guys got playing time. Here, almost everybody on the bench. Uh, here's here's one thing we're going to have to do, though. We took a while to teach Jason how to run the ball, how to slide. We're going to have to teach Josh. He hasn't got to that, well, that far yet. take it down to the goal line. He scored here. I don't know what they got to do. You get halfway in the end zone, but they still don't give us a touchdown. I don't know what they were looking at, but we come back and get the touchdown here on the same play from, from our Thunder set. Here we'll get an inside look at it from Trey coming over the top. Trey's not very big. Look at the height he gets on this ball. One thing he's going to have to do is learn to not stick that thing out there as much. Watch how they try to slap it. But he does, he does a good job of holding on to it. What a crowd of fun. Well, I tell you, we had more Man. fans there than Vandy, and that, you know, that's, don't think the players don't notice that. That's the reason, you know, we call it the Auburn family. Here's a good throw and catch to Justin Fesco, another one of our, our seniors. And here's big guy coming around. We got to give, give Brandon a name. He, he's a load. He's, he's not as quick as the other running backs, but he's, He's a little bit bigger. Here he runs. Nice to have in the fourth quarter. Well, I tell you what. People are tired. He, when people are tired, uh, he is a load. Kind of reminds me when back in Ole Miss, we used to have Deuce McAllister. We'd turn him loose after we'd run John Avery. Here's a good throw and catch to Jake Slaughter, another uh, Nashville product. And these guys are really fired up about uh, coming back home and playing. Here's a good run inside to Trey Smith and finishing off our last touchdown. And great offensive performance and defensive performance by this entire football team coaching staff did a great job our fans did an excellent job and we're off and rolling now now we've got to improve here's both teams praying at the end of the game but probably for that guy injured yeah, for Vanderbilt yeah Chet Williams or FCA Chapman does a great job this week's Tiger of the game is presented by your local Toyota dealers Death of Feeling Toyota once again we're wrapping things up here at Vanderbilt Stadium after a terrific Auburn 45 to 7 victory over Vanderbilt and I think one of the great things to come out of this game today coach was the fact that Josh Sullivan now knows if if something should happen to Jason he can come in and play SEC football I don't think there's any doubt he's a good football player and gonna be a good quarterback here but you never know and you don't get any confidence until you get out there and, and try so uh, it was good for him and all the younger guys that we played on both sides of the ball even in the kicking game and uh, you know just an all-out effort but uh, you know we you know what uh, we got to do we've got to go back next week in the open date get better work hard be a better team when we play Western Kentucky in two weeks. You told the players this was just the first step today. There's a lot of a lot of progress to be made. Oh yeah, we want to win this league. We've got to continue to get better every week, and we've got to, you know, keep making plays. And and again, we've still got some things to iron out on both sides of the ball. Final score: Auburn 45, Vanderbilt 7. Off next week. Back in two weeks with Western Kentucky. We'll see you then. Production. Snap, place, kick is up. It's got the distance. Does it have the direction? Yes! Oh, my goodness! Good job, guys. That's how you start it out. That's how you finish it. Everybody got, most everybody got to play. We played good, played hard. Two weeks paid off, a little rest. Now we get down to serious business. Enjoy this one for 24 hours. Tomorrow we start. And it's all for real. But you guys have gotten a lot better since the first game. We're going to keep getting better as the year goes on. Those of you that are hurt, get well. You got to get well. We got to have you next week. A good job. Not very often does that many people get to play in a college football game, and all you young guys did a real good job. 
We greet you from a now quiet Jordan Hare Stadium, but uh, things were pretty exciting around here, Coach, uh, about uh, an hour and a half ago. It was a fun day. We, we got off to a great start on both offense and defense, had some great kicking game plays, and uh, we basically dominated the entire game, which is really what we needed going into our conference play next week. The Hilltoppers have had their success running the ball and running it inside, but not today. Okay. No, they couldn't run inside, and uh, we were going to force them to run the ball outside, but it worked well. well they, they didn't run inside, and, and uh, I don't think the first half had a, had a first down. So it's been a really fun day for Auburn fans, and there were tons of them here, over 85,000. Let's go into the dressing room now and talk to some of the players. Yeah, it was a great kick. Everything was perfect from the snap to hold, and uh, you know, couldn't ask for anything better. You're in the record book, too. You were in there with O'Donoghue for the longest kick. I look, well, you know... Really fortunate, you know, Lord's blessing with that opportunity. Coach gave me the opportunity, and, and like I said, everything was perfect, so. Uh, you know, we've been talking about it a whole week, you know. They had uh, um, a big offensive lineman, and, and <laughs> we just yeah, didn't go baby. out and do our technique and yeah, stop the run, you know, forcing them to pass, but we did that and everything good. Yeah, we just wanted to come out and, you know, just the first 10 minutes, we just wanted to just hop on them and, you know, just take their confidence away and, and after that, just, just work on us and the things we have to do. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, guys came out, had fun, but they were into the game, so I think that played a huge factor in the game. You know, this is just, just the beginning of our nine-week nine, nine week stretch, and uh, it's always good to get off on a good, a good start, and, uh, you know, we're just getting ready for next week, and... Uh, you know, we got to prepare hard in practice and uh, get ready for the SEC. One of those hot, humid, late September days, but uh, I was really impressed with the 85,000 people who came to this game. Coach. I think they were excited about being back. It's the only second home game that we've had this year. It's been a month since we played, and it was a great crowd, great Tiger walk, and everybody was enthused, and our players gave them something to clap about. You're going to see Auburn come out and score on its first three possessions. Let's take a look. Must be fun to run out there and see that sea of orange, Coach. 85,000, the first time we played home in a month, and they were excited about seeing their Auburn Tigers. And here's the first play with Ronnie Brown off tackle, and, and uh, it was good to see our running game start real early. They go 65 yards on the opening drive and only one third down play in the drive. Here's a cutback by Ronnie, and you see Jason Campbell throwing the block, and our offensive line really played well in this game. Here's... We wanted to try to get Jason throwing on time. Here he sets his feet and throws it to Jarris McIntyre for his first, first completion of the game. That was third and seven. Third and seven, and Jason had a great game throwing the football. Here's Ronnie going down the field. Good block on the left side by Mark Para. Good offensive day, good production on the running and throwing the ball, and here's Trey Smith over the top for his first touchdown of the day. And again, good surge for the offensive line. They didn't get in, but he shoved the football in. The yeah, he got, got it over the top. Here's where we really started playing well defensively was the first play. And uh, not giving up the first down in the first half is a, quite an accomplishment. Against a team like this, they, we beat them pretty well, but I tell you, they had a good offensive team and really knew what they were doing with their scheme. Here's a good throw and catch to Silas uh, Daniels. Again, uh, the thing that Jason did in this game, he set his feet real well and got the ball off. Here's Carnell with his first carry of the game. On the right side behind uh, Andrew Kirk, who got his first start with Marcus McNeil not playing. Here's a good throw and catch to Silas Daniels on the play-action pass, which we're going to have to do quite a bit of as we get the running game going. Jason has now completed 7 of 7 to open the game. We've been underthrown, but a uh, good route, if you call it stutter and go to the wide receiver, and he's kind of bit on the out route. Good throw and catch, and got us up by two touchdowns. Boy, that running game, you open it up, and it just opens up the passing game so well. Well, it really does, and, you know, it gives you confidence in, in your passing game, too, when you get the running game going. Here we come back on defense. He'll throw a little waggle pass, and Derek Graves on the big stop to the fullback out of the backfield. Uh, defense having fun. Second and long. Second and long, and Don Terry Thomas read this play from the, from the get-go. This little read play, they read the defensive end, but they didn't see Don Terry Thomas coming from the inside. So they're backed up and they have to give up the ball again. They've gained they gained a total of 11 yards in the first half. Look at this. It's a good play right here. Starting on the right side on the punt return by Trey Smith. Good block by Rashad Gilliard there. Uh, good block by Andrew Lett. Just uh, getting positive yards and our punt return team's getting better every week. Trey must have had a fun day. <laughs> he had a fun day. Here's Jason. He's set in the pocket. Trust your offensive lineman. Get it downfield. Jarris McIntyre on the completion. 
come back and run a draw play to Carnell and uh, vintage Carnell. A little stutter step right there inside enables him to get to the end zone 21 to nothing. He only had a few carries. He was uh, banged up just a hair. He got hit on his uh, where he broke his leg last year and and uh, but uh, just a little bit of swelling. We'll find out a little bit more today, but they don't think it's anything serious. There's a little stutter step inside. Kind of reminds me of the Syracuse game <laughs> last year and uh, Carnell gets his first touchdown of the day. Great crowd by the Auburn Tigers. Look at all the orange in the stands. Oh, man. That's a beautiful sight. Got in under the rain, too. Boy, did it rain about an hour, two hours after the game. Boy, it did. Here we come back, and again, Junior Rosegreen playing safety. A good stop there, good tackle. Uh, Kevin Hobbs there, number 49, got his first start at uh, defensive back. There's a shot of the Auburn Network radio crew. Gave Rod Bramman a little, a little something to talk about in this game. <laughs> got something to work with, yeah. Here's a deep ball, and Kevin Hobbs, who we talked about earlier, walk on, had a, had a great spring, great two a day. He's got his first start. He's got two interceptions for the year, and uh, they picked on him. But I tell you what, he holds it on. He's a tall cornerback. He's 6'2", plays the ball well, and perfect uh, execution looking back yeah. as the, as the uh, receiver looks. Great play. Here we come back on offense. Jason sets his feet. Ronnie Brown catches a little swing pass. Good block right there by, by one of our wide receivers. Cooper Wallace on the block. Ronnie getting yards after contact. Down at the 29 now. Here's Carnell just blasting up the right side. Good block by Cooper Wallace. Mark Perra, Monrico Crittington on the right side. Well, you can tell these guys were ready to play. Coach. Well, it, it was unlucky for Vanderbilt and Western Kentucky. You know, our back was against the wall, and our guys really came to play on both games. And, and uh, now we've... You know, we've got the, these two games going pretty good and we've got our confidence, which we really needed. And uh, the fact that you were able to get all these guys into the game and uh, get get them some uh, plays and then get them out of the game for the second half, that's, that's what's coming up. Well, you know, we really needed to, to make a statement earlier. And as you can tell here defensively, you know, that's where it really all starts is getting your ball back for your offense and just the tremendous pressure. You know, their quarterback was running for his life all night. There's on Terrace Williams. You know, he's got a broke hand, a broke arm, and to make a lick like that is just <laughs> amazing to me. But, uh, again, we made a statement on defense, and it gave our offense an opportunity to, to put enough points on the board where we could give a lot of, a lot of playing time to a lot of people. There's uh, Tim Duckworth, uh, Taylor's Mississippi, on his, his first sack. And here's the big man, Brandon Jacobs, down the right side, and good blocks by Jarris McIntyre. And big boy's hard to get, bring down. Here's Jarris on the screen pass, takes it down inside the five, and again gives us an opportunity to get guys like Cole Bennett in the game. They're number 87 tight end, get a lot of playing time. Here's Trey Smith on his second touchdown. He gives us some uh, breathing room where we can start playing a lot of backups even in the second quarter. The freshman Cole Bennett, three receptions. Got a good day. Three receptions, and he's going to be a good one for us. And again, like you said earlier, it's you know 34 to nothing. Gives you a chance to do what we're getting ready to do. We, we, we come back in, play a lot of the backups in the second quarter. Uh, there's Carlos Dansby. This is one of his last tackles of the game. You don't see him much anymore. Here's a, we try to block a, work on all of our kicking game. Had some returns, we'll work on the block there. Give us a little chance to work on it. There's a great return by Trey Smith. Protect the football, get straight up north and south. We had a middle return there. That gave us the opportunity on like 30, 40 seconds to move down and Philip Yost. Three seconds to go, kicked a record field goal, wow. 57 yards. and confidence builder for this team and uh, glad to see that for Philip Yost. Now he knows he can do it. At Jordan Hare Stadium after a 48 to 3 conquest of the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky and that 38 to nothing halftime uh, lead coach gave you uh, some options that I know you were ready to use. Yeah, first of all we were excited about how we played and then it gives you an option of get playing a lot of players that don't normally get to play but our second team players got to play, our third team players played, and whenever they get to play, our first team players become cheerleaders on the sideline, and that's always great to see. Every day when you go to work, you walk past the Jonathan B. Loveless Museum, which is a marvelous uh, thing here for Auburn fans. It really is, and uh, you, when you walk by, you can hear the music inside, and Coach Jordan talking and giving speeches, and <laughs> it's just a fun place to visit, and uh, uh, whenever somebody comes, that's the first place they want to go. Okay, we have a little mini visit for you. Hi, I'm Dave Rosenblatt. I am the archivist of the Lovelace Athletic Museum, and we welcome you here to the museum. The museum 
was named after Jonathan B. Lovelace, who was the manager of the undefeated 1913-1914 Auburn football team, who later went on to found an insurance company, and it's through the generosity of his family and his employers that this museum is built and dedicated to him. Although the museum officially opened in 1996, the vision for this project began seven years earlier when then athletic director Pat Dye recognized the need to display Auburn sports achievements from the past to the present. The museum has a longer history than actually 1996. It started back in 1989 when this building was constructed, the athletic complex. And Coach Pat Dye, who was athletic director then, wanted to have a museum here. And we had 5,000 square feet of space, very high ceilings and all. And the room was basically empty until we could get the money to actually build the museum. The museum is more than a storage place for Auburn trophies and plaques. It embodies the Auburn spirit through artifacts, dioramas, and videos to help outsiders understand more what Auburn is and the Auburn family to further embrace what Auburn means. But we wanted to capture that elusive spirit of Auburn that everybody talks about, and that is when one is through here, one has a lot of knowledge about Auburn athletics, but one is hopefully fired up about being here and being part of the history of Auburn athletics, and one leaves here with a little higher level of excitement or spirit, and that's why we have so many videos, that's why we have so many dioramas, that's why we have so many interactive things. We didn't want to have a museum that was just trophy after trophy after trophy with a lot of words on it and people leave and say that's interesting but I'm not any more excited than I was before. 27 slants, so they'll kill us more. Don't kill anybody. Keep the ball and roll out around it. Hey, we at the goal line. We got to light up like a Christmas tree. Space limitations and the need to update the museum on a yearly basis is an ongoing struggle that coincides with team or individual success and the constant acquisitions of new artifacts. We always have some exhibits that are temporary exhibits that we know are only going to be here a year or two, mostly in kiosks like this, uh, and we can update those. But we're not moving dioramas. We're not taking those out, and those are the big space items. So it's always a battle between what new things we have to put in, plus what acquisitions we got in during that year of things that may have happened in, in the early 1900s that are historically valuable that we want to put in. So it's a, it's a constant battle, but it's a good battle because we're doing well and we're getting new uh, artifacts even about older things. With 80,000 patrons visiting the museum annually, both Auburn fans and newcomers alike can relive great moments from the past and experience first-hand game day activities on a year-round basis whether it's the first visit or one of many, rest assured the Lovelace Athletic Museum and Hall of Honor will reunite the most historic occurrences and heroes of Auburn sports to all generations, the Auburn family, for decades to come. Down the line players, but it puts your first guys on the bench with that next big game coming up. Well, it really does. We're, we're able to knock the rust off, so to speak, after an open date but also keep them fresh and not get beat up a little bit where we can come back actually on Sunday and have a pretty good practice and get ready and get ready for our next conference game against Tennessee. Let's look at second half play. You start the second half with uh, mostly backups on defense. Yeah, we took almost every starter out. We did play a few just here and there, but we want to give all of our backups an opportunity to play. And again, you can see him running around. There's Marquise Gunn from Alexander City. His first sack as an Auburn Tiger. He'll have many while he's here. Uh, defense really played hard. We got the ball back, and here we come back. Josh Sullivan had a good day of throwing the football. Quick hit to Courtney Taylor. A uh, good block there by Brandon Jacobs. Josh sitting in the pocket there. Cole Bennett catching the ball on the outside. A lot of said earlier. Yeah, a lot of freshmen, a lot of young guys. Uh, watch this run right here. Uh, it goes in the end zone at 23. Just unfortunately was in the way right there. And, uh, Brandon lowers his shoulder. Didn't really mean anything. He's just protecting himself. But good blocking of the offensive line. Stephen Ross on the outside there with a good block. And you know, we just tired it in, got the first score, and kind of made sure we put a statement in the second half. And you know, we kept playing more and more players. A lot of second and third teamers. Uh, there you can see a, a, a good play by the defense. The band had a great time. They do a super job. Only drive of the day for the Hilltoppers, and they get the field goal. Field goal. Don't blame them for scoring. Oh, no. no it's, you know, they, they came down and 
fought hard. Here's a Josh throwing a quick out great catch right there by Devin Room to do. It's an eight minute drive here. Now here's uh, Anthony Mix, who we just moved wide receiver on the outside catching. There's Jared Britt, 71 on the inside freshman. Good screen pass. King Dunlap, 77 on a good block. Uh, another freshman from Nashville Brentwood Academy. A towering figure. Iron, yeah, and there's John Vaughn, also a freshman from Brentwood Academy. We're playing a lot of young guys here, and it's going to really pay dividends as we go through the season. And they get one last chance, uh, and uh, Timmy Duckworth to get this block and had a good day. Good job, Auburn Tigers. 48-3, to three, the final. This week's Tiger of the Game is presented by your local Toyota dealers. Get the feeling, Toyota. This week's Tiger of the Game is sophomore running back and return specialist Trey Smith. On the day, Smith rushed for two scores and returned five punts for a total of 54 yards. Trey Smith, this week's Toyota Tiger. Must have been for the running back, for the whole offensive team to, have to really enjoy a day like this. Well, you know, move the chains, make big plays, break tackles. You know, the offensive line gets a little bit of a pat on the back, you know, when you make five or six hundred yards Which off they don't often get <laughs> yeah they, they don't often get but and we got to play a lot so uh it was uh, it was fun for the offense they needed confidence after the way we started this season you know uh you know we we just didn't didn't have a lot of things to talk about positive for the offense but now they're starting to get things going and couldn't happen at a better time excuse my french but this ain't nothing like it's going to be next week folks. next next week it'll be it'll be a war and uh this used to be, I understand, a big rival, you know, Tennessee and Auburn. The and third game of the year. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and we're looking forward to having it here for the first time. I, my first year here, we went to Tennessee and played, but uh, now this is the first time that we've had them in Jordan here Stadium since I've been here, and I'm excited about the game. Auburn and Tennessee next Saturday night, right here at Jordan Hare Stadium. Thank you for watching. We'll see you then. Brown still in at the tailback, and the give to Brown. Slips the tackle. He's in! Campbell throws deep. He's got Obamato, and he's got a touchdown. Boston looks downfield, fires, and the pass is. Was it intercepted? Yes! One month ago tonight, they had us written off for dead. I told you this was a player's game. You guys went out and won this football game. You took it to them. You're the most physical team. You got to be able to run it to win this league. And today, we started sawing wood. We're going to keep on running. Good job, offensive line. Give yourself a <laughs> Feels, guys, when you beat a top 10 team, but there's another top 10 team in this stadium. We're going to work our way up. Keep your heads up. Let's keep getting better. If you hurt, if you're injured, see Arnold. We come back to work. We go to work tomorrow. We got the Hogs next Saturday. Let's go to work. Good job. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Tommy Tuberville. Brought to you by your Alabama Coca-Cola bottle. Coca-Cola, real. Colonial Bank, the bank of choice of the Auburn Tigers. Great Southern Wood, for building outdoors, yellow is your color. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. Tiffin Motorhomes, wherever you go, we go. By Ziegler Meat, for over 75 years, a tradition of great taste. Cooper Tires, the world is your course, drive on. The friendly folks at your neighborhood Winn-Dixie. Win dixie the real deal. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, who remind you to drive with caution, wear your seatbelt, and always be careful, be safe. And by Golden Flake Snack Food, the official snack of the Auburn Tigers. Welcome to Jordan-Hare Stadium about an hour after a huge win over the Tennessee Volunteers, 28-21. 
got a little interesting there at the last. May I say War Eagle, Coach? What a game. Man, yeah. what a game. Hey, that's more like it. You know, <laughs> our offense came to play. We, we ran the football, and we played good, aggressive defense. You know, that's what we expected all year long, but, hey, we saved it for the right time. And that close to blowing Tennessee out, but they have a great quarterback. Oh, they yeah. Okay, they got a great football team, and the, and the problem you have with a team like that is uh, they can score at any time. So even when we got up 21 to one points in the in the fourth quarter we knew we had a battle on our hands and they kept plugging and that's a sign of a good team but you know the the last drive that our offense had and i guess we made four or five first downs we run like six or seven minutes off the clock that's what we didn't have a couple years ago because we in the past we would have not made a first down and, and put the game away so to speak but uh proud for the whole team and our fans it was a great night for college football let's go in the dressing room and talk to some of those heroes Man, no doubt. Huh? <laughs> no, it, it, it don't be, been a long time since I cared about 30 times. <laughs> man, so, I mean, I'm just overwhelmed, man. I mean, I don't really know what to say, man. I'm just, I'm just glad. Yeah, you know, we wanted to come out and uh, execute. You know, we wanted to play hard. You know, Coach told us, you know, leave it all on the field. You know, he said, it's a playoff game tonight. He said, y'all got to go out and work hard and uh, just do the best you can. Yeah, I was thinking that the whole time because they kept running the same route, but he just went through it over there. Then they got me on one time when he ran a dig. I really couldn't turn to get my heels turned fast enough, but I said next time they probably I'm gonna pick it. Boy, what a big play. <laughs> yeah, it was a big play for the defense, you know, we came out victorious. Yeah, we, we shut down pretty good. Um the score don't reflect how we dominated the game, but uh, we was we're the most physical team out there. We took it to them and the offense did a great job of running down their throats and um, we we're, we're fortunate to get the victory. Not much orange here at Jordan Hare now, but it was all orange earlier. Now, the Tennessee was down in that corner down there, Coach. That's a different shade of orange, but it was all orange. You could tell the difference between the Auburn fans and the, <laughs> yeah. and the UT fans. It's great to, great to have all the people here in orange, and it was a loud night, you know, for, for both football teams. One of the things you guys preach all the time is start in the first quarter and in the third quarter, and we did that. We, we scored on the first drive of the, of the first quarter. Second drive, too. In, in second drive. But the big key was the first drive that we had the ball the second half. And I thought that take a little wind out of them, and we got up to 21, but but uh, we had to fight our way back. But it was still great to see our offense be consistent. First half action. Coach, your record is intact. You lose the coin toss again. <laughs> lose it again. Uh, you want to play defense first in a game like this, but I tell you, our offense took the bull by the horn. And here we came out on the first play and ran a little bootleg pass to Cooper Wallace. And you could tell right there how physical this game was going to be right off the bat. I tell you, it was a physical night on both sides. Here we set the tone, running the ball with Carnell up the middle. Good blocking downfield. And a great night for Carnell Williams. I tell you, this, is a, this young man's getting stronger and stronger. 189 yards on 36 carries. Look how many tackles you break. We'll have a lot of yards after contact in this game when we add them all up. Here's a big third down play. Screen pass to Carnell. Uh, big third down conversion. Only, only third down play in this drive. Watch this right here. Watch this little DB coming up. Uh, better bring your lunch when you try to tackle Ronnie Brown over the middle when he's fresh. Here he comes and scoring our first touchdown. And what a drive our guys put on in the first series. A beautiful thing, Coach. Well, it's all about blocking. And uh, we blocked. And then running backs, you give them a, you give them a little bit of hole, we, we can make a play. Boy, this team is ready to play on defense as well as you're about to see. Well, look at the fans. The fans are ready to play, too. We kept the fans in the game. That's what you have to do when you play at home. And, and our defense took advantage of a, of a good offensive series, first series, and then... That was Spencer Johnson. Watch this hit. Knock a fumble out. We just couldn't come up with a fumble, but that was a third down play, and it was short, and, uh, and we had a great first series. Here we come back on offense, and watch Carnell breaking tackles, and... They just didn't have the right angles on him at the, be at the beginning of the game. They, they adjusted a little bit as the game went on, but third and seven. it's all about blocking. Here's third and seven. Good catch by Anthony Mix. Get that first down stretch out. Big play right there. Keep the chains moving. Ronnie Brown. Watch Ronnie going inside. Good block by Monrico Crittington. The offensive line came off the ball and held their blocks this week, and that's a big key. Watch this. This, is, this is what we call stutter and go. They want to put eight and nine in the box. Play action, throw it to Ben Overnew, touchdown Auburn, 14 Z. Zip. Mm, the run will open up the pass. Yep, and we're gonna get better and better at this. Here we come back on defense, and you know, we we were, I think get what, get four or five yards up rushing the whole game. And the linebackers were so watch good. Carlos Danzer right here getting off the block. 
just putting pressure on the quarterback the first half, and we just kept them confused. Here we come back on our third series. Big play. Watch this. Break a tackle. He's got to lock up on uh, Jarius McIntyre, and I thought we were going to break it right here. If he just keeps running with Ronnie, we got a chance, but still a big play. Drive stalled, and this is a 37-yard field goal. Here we come back, and they throw a little short screen, and... Uh, you know, you can't stutter around our defense. You try to cut back. We've got too much speed coming from inside out. Uh, again, a great crowd. Uh, very loud when they were on offense. Look at this run defense. I tell you, we, we'll, we'll move up real big in the run defense stats this week. We're going to get one of these tip balls before long. We keep flying around. Carlos Rogers played a great football game. He sure did. Here was a turning point, I thought. Uh, they're a great punter. We caused him to shank the ball with a little pressure up front. Now we come back and... Uh, so a third down play to Justin Fetzko, one of our few seniors, made a great play. And watch this. This is one we we uh, should have went up 21 to nothing. Great throw and catch to uh, Devin Aruma should do. I don't. You only have to have one foot in. You yeah. make the call. He had both feet in. Both feet in, and I don't know what they were looking at, but we got to come back. And this was a big play for them. We're running right at them, and they put the head on the, the helmet on the football and cause a fumble. We've got to hold on to the ball. Look at Travis Williams coming up and taking on a 300-pound guard. He's about 205 pounds. It's called gang tackling. Oh, Brett Edens, best football game he's played. Uh, two sacks yeah. all over the quarterback the first half. Great job of him getting penetration up the middle. Here we come back and run what we call a read play inside. Reading the defensive ends, a little uh, two-way option with the quarterback and the tailback. We don't make a first down. Cody Bliss had an excellent game punting. Average over 50 yards a punt. I think he won the punting battle in this game between his compadre on the other side. Here's a, oh, a great play by Carlos Dansby and Don Terrace Thomas. They should have made the interception, but they they caught the tip ball and they made the play. They got a good football team, and you can tell right here they made the drive at the end of the first half and took the momentum. Nearly complete domination, but only a 14-7 lead. 7-7 lead of the half, which should have been more, but uh, we'll talk more about that later. Coach uh, Rod Bramlett, the new voice of the Tigers, you gave him some some things to talk about today. I'm anxious to hear the entire game uh, <laughs> with him calling. This is actually the first real exciting game that he's had to call, and we, we scored points, we made big defensive plays, and, uh, you know, he's doing a great job. He's got big shoes to fill, and, but we're proud of Rod. We've been keeping the camera on, Rod, and so we'll give you a little progress report now. Campbell under center to throw. Fires. Caught. At the 25. Still on his feet. McIntyre to the 20. To the 15. To the 10. 5. Gone! Touchdown Auburn! The 2003-2004 season begins a new chapter in the Auburn Athletics history book as Rod Bramlett enters his first year as the play-by-play -play announcer for the Auburn Tigers. Having gone to Auburn, graduated from Auburn, being in broadcasting, um, like I, I, I've said many, many times, I mean, it's a dream come true. I mean, this is a dream job. I can't imagine uh, if folks if folks like the job I'm doing, then I, I, I foresee myself doing this for a long, long time. Bramblett has been in the radio industry since his sophomore year in college and has been the announcer for Auburn baseball since 1993. This experience has helped Bramblett transition into his new role. I think my experience doing baseball and basketball will help in the sense that I know what's expected. Uh, having done basketball and been around Jim, having been around Jim during football games, I kind of, I, over the years, I've, I now know what's expected of me. In the backfield along with Brandon Johnson. Brandon Jacobs in motion. And the give is to Smith. Up, over, and in! Touchdown, Auburn! 10.06 to go in the first quarter. Trey Smith up and over for the first score of the game. Of the many changes occurring in Bramlett's career, he also has an addition to his family life. Bramlett is now the proud father of a baby boy. Joshua Baird Bramlett was born Wednesday, October 1st at 6.15 in the evening, weighing 8 pounds, 14 ounces. Joshua is Bramlett and wife Paula's second child. They also have a daughter, Shelby. Even though Auburn fans are hearing a different voice for the first time since 1981, the voice they are hearing is familiar and that of a true Auburn man. Tigers. Tommy, you had some momentum to overcome with Tennessee scoring late in the uh, in the second quarter, so it's very important to come out and 
reestablish those. Well, the problem that you have when they score like that, I think it's about two minutes and 30 seconds, uh, they drove the ball down and scores. They, they found some momentum, but they found plays that were working against our defense. And obviously, coming back to the second half, you know, they kept running those plays. So we, we had to adjust. And, and uh, I tell you, they did a great job adjusting at halftime, but our coaches did just enough to make sure that we were able to get the win. Let's uh, look now as Auburn comes out and reestablishes themselves. They start on offense and make a couple of first downs before you stop them. Yeah, it was, uh, they came out and, and started running the ball a little bit more than starting the second half. They tried to get some momentum, but uh, our defense stopped them. He slammed the ball down right there. That's normally a penalty, but uh, they gave him a little break there. Here we go, swarming the screen pass. That play, that play right there had given us more problems than anything else on defense at the beginning of the year. Here we start back on offense, and I thought this was a, a character drive. Ronnie Brown on his first carry. Uh, we're just blowing them off the ball. Great block right there by Monrico Crittington. Jarris McIntyre down the field. It's pretty good to have those two running backs going back to back. Ronnie, Fresh legs. Ronnie leaves the game at this point. Yeah, he tweaked his hamstring a little bit. He'll be fine. Here's Carnell running up the middle, running hard. Here's a little play. We caught him blitzing inside. Good block downfield oh. by Brandon Johnson. Carnell will not run out of bounds. I tell you, he's the most physical 200-pound running back I've ever seen. Here he goes inside. 34. And gets across the goal line, but uh, they make us run another play. And uh, all we do is we just line up and say, here we come. Look at this. Don't Brandon Jop Brandon Johnson with a good block and Carnell for the touchdown. Cadillac is my SEC player of the week, Coach. Well, I don't know what else you have to do to win it, but I tell you what, it was a great performance. Not only him, all the offensive linemen, Cooper Wallace, tight end. This is the best night our tight ends have had all year long. And a big, big touchdown to go ahead 28 or 21 to 7. It is a, an amazing thing when an offensive line gets that right chemistry. It really is. Here they, they're moving down the field. Now they start throwing the ball a little more. We've got we've to tighten our pass, pass defense up here going into the next few games. And here's a big play right there by Travis Williams. He causes a fumble, and DeMarco McNeil gets the gets the turnover and it's a big play. That might have been the turning point in the game. Got the ball back, took a little air out of them and got our got our fans back in the game. It's 21 to 7. Now we've got to take it and drive and try to put this ball game away. Look at the blocking down the field. And Carnell running behind his pads, protecting the football. Good block by Danny Lindsay, our center. He is a moving target, coach. He is a, some kind of moving target. Here we come with the big boy. Brandon Jacobs down the middle, and he is a load when everybody's tired on the other side. Here's Carnell back, man. Look at this run. Keeps his feet moving. He protects the football. That was third and three, too. And uh, makes the first down. I think we were 9 of 14 on third down conversions, which usually, if you're over 50%, that's amazing. Switch ends of the field now for the fourth quarter, and here comes the touchdown. Here it comes. Watch Cole Bennett in the end zone. True freshman from Dalton, Georgia, and you can't get any more wide open than that. And that puts us ahead 28 to 7. And we think we've got control of it, but... Here come the Vols. Yeah, the old veteran has got things figured I out. I tell you what, when you've got a senior quarterback and, you know, he's got no quit in him, he can throw the football and, and we had to hold on. There's our first touchdown. They moved it down the field. The bad thing is we didn't make them move the football and run the clock. The three and out, and now they come and drive again. I thought that was big for them. They they score. We have to go three and out, and we miss a tackle right there, Karibi DD, and we give them another quick touchdown, and the game is on. It is crunch time. Now we've got to do something on offense. And I heard uh, Steve Insminger and Hugh Noss said, let's go back to our offense. Let's don't get conservative and let's move the ball and, and win, the, win the ball game on offense. And we just about did it. There's a great run by Carnell Williams on the outside. But we can't hold on. There's a fourth and 15. That was a gutsy play by their wide receiver and quarterback. And but you'd run six minutes off the clock. We'd run six minutes. But here's the play of the game. Carlos Rogers comes up and makes the interception. And... And, uh, you know, good football teams find a way to make plays, and Auburn Tigers came up with a big win. Here, he, here it is right here. And watch him make a great acceleration to the ball, runs in front of the receiver. I thought he trapped it at the beginning, but you can tell there the ball never hit, hit the ground, and the Tigers win. This week's Tiger of the Game is presented by your local Toyota dealer. Get the feeling, Toyota. This week's Toyota Tiger of the Game is tailback Carnell Williams. 28 to 21 victory over Tennessee. The junior from Atala, Alabama, rushed for 185 yards on 35 carries and a touchdown. Carnell Williams, this week's Toyota Tiger of the Game.
Coach, so little time to enjoy a great victory because you got to go to Fayetteville next week. It, it's, uh, it is a great victory, and we beat a top-10 team, an undefeated team, but we've got to do it again next week. We've got to try to do it. Uh, Arkansas is playing well. They beat some good teams. They've had an off day, and so they'll be well-rested. We have to go to Fayetteville. We've got to take this football team that's probably beat up a little bit to Fayetteville and play another physical football game. It's, it's an exciting matchup, though, against a, a really good defense that showed itself tonight and a running football team, so it ought to be a great matchup. Well, we grew up a little tonight, but we'll find out next week how much we did grow up. Indeed we will, and it is an 11.45 start. Uh, Jefferson Pilot telecast next week. Auburn Network will be on the air two hours before game time, and we'll have the replay here for you on Sunday. We'll see you next week. The following is an Auburn Network production. Campbell takes the snap, gives it to Williams across the five. He's in! Touchdown, Auburn! Cornell Williams from six yards out. And the fake to Cobbs and the keeper by Jones, and he's across the 15 to him. Fumble, 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 fumble! Auburn's got it! Rose Green falls on it at the eight. Jones out of the shotgun to throw downfield, and Dansby drops him at the 41-yard line. And he is down hard, a loss of six, and the Tigers take over. Listen up, guys. Thank you. <laughs> I told you you were the best team when we got here. I think they thought we were Texas. Yeah. It ain't hey, Texas is on the other side of the Mississippi River. We came in and we won the line of scrimmage on both sides. We're crazy. We executed. We didn't get the stupid penalties, and you played Auburn football. That's what it's all about. When you stay together as a team, when you play together as a team like that, and nothing can can rattle you. You know they they got it. They got down there a couple of times. We tightened up. We had some guys that stepped up that had been wondering whether they could play on this level or not. They stepped up today. Good job. Yeah. Go crazy. Well, you know we we four and two. We started out about number seven in the country. We beat the two set. We took last week. We beat the number 17. This week we beat the number 17. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Tommy Tuberville. Brought to you by your Alabama Coca-Cola bottle. Coca-Cola, real. Colonial Bank, the bank of choice of the Auburn Tigers. Great Southern Wood for building outdoors. Yellow is your color. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. Tiffin Motorhomes, wherever you go, we go. Buy Ziegler Meat, for over 75 years, a tradition of great taste. Cooper Tires, the world is your course, drive on. The friendly folks at your neighborhood Winn-Dixie, Winn-Dixie, the real deal. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, who remind you to drive with caution, wear your seatbelt, and always be careful, be safe. And buy Golden Flake Snack Food, the official snack of the Auburn Tigers. We greet you from Razorback Stadium, Fayetteville, Arkansas, after a 10-3 Auburn victory. A few of the fans are still in the stands as we just heard that. Coach. Yeah, they, but they're leaving quietly yes, for the are. first time in a long time since we've been coming up here. It's a, it was a great game. Our guys came and put their hard hats on, went to work, didn't let anything bother them. You know, the crowd noise was outstanding you know for arkansas we didn't get rattled we took what they gave us we didn't turn the ball over made the plays and got the win just so rock em, sock em, field position physical football i don't know of any other running back i'd love to have in a place like this than carnell williams because he can turn a one yard run into the best four yard run in the mm -hmm. world it just amazes me how he gets gets extra yardage but our offensive line played well our receivers blocked well downfield we made catches when we need to needed to and jason campbell continues to play well and it was such a great thing to see you turn it over to defense at the end and they come through. Well, you know, how many times have we turned it over to defense or anybody and then just, just you know, give it up at the end? But uh, we came to play. Our defense uh, shut their running game down and, 
they're not a good passing team. You know, they can pass it, but they don't live and die off of it. And, you know, we were, we were able to put pressure on him and make him throw, throw it up for grabs. So a victory over a number seven team in the country for a second straight week and another big celebration in the dressing room. Let's go there. No, sir, we knew we were coming in. We had to stop, you know, make a big stand on the first down, put him in key situation, and that we did. Yeah. It was a great win, huh? Definitely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Big win. Get, get all the God, man. Get all the grace of God, oh, yeah. man. He, 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 he with us. I told you before, um, you know what I'm saying? He gave us that fire, and he's still burning. Yeah, you know, Coach wanted this one real bad. Uh, you know, we didn't want to come out and play hard, you know, play with our team. We knew it was going to be a, a tough fall game, you know, all the way down to the end. We knew it may not be many points scored on either side, but uh, you know, we didn't want to try to do our best to keep our defense off the field so much. So, you know, they had a, they run the ball so much, and we want our defense to get tired. And uh, so I think we came out and did a great job. Oh, uh, you know, going, going to the game, uh, you know, I've been knowing his stats. Uh, we got it. You know, uh, put on our bulletin board. He's been leading the SEC. He's a great back. So, uh, you know, we, we as offense just kind of took it personal, you know, to go out, out rush him and, you know, show him who got the best backs in the SEC. Razorback Stadium after a big 10-3 to Auburn win. As you can see, the Auburn network is still on the air and having a lot of fun with the folks back home, I would imagine, by now. And it was a lot of fun for an old Arkansan coach, too. It was great to come home. The first time I've won coming back home to the state of Arkansas, and uh, <laughs> it, it, it means a lot. I, I say bet. the pressure is on. You know, every time we've come here, we've played either played good and, and it's been close and lost, or we've played bad. But uh, today we came, and uh, our guys uh, weren't going to be denied, and we won the old-fashioned way. We ran the ball and stopped the run. Let's see some of the first half highlights. Finally got the toss right after 10 straight losses. Yeah, Justin Pesco finally won the toss, and uh, we elected to kick off and pay dividends for us. And here they come out on their first series, and you can tell we weren't going to allow number four Cobbs to run the football. We were going to make them throw to win this game. And, uh, and uh, I tell you, we got great pass rush. This number nine rider, Matt Jones, can scramble and put pressure on you. But big play out of Kevin Hobbs right there. He had a great game for us as a true true starter for the, really the second game in a row. How about this for a big play? Big play, opening opening play, we just run a little draw play and uh, good blocking downfield out of Ben Obmanu. And the Cadillac gets over 40 yards on the first carry and I'm sure they were a little bit of, of shock there on that first play. Here we come back and we throw a little quick screen to to Jarris McIntyre has become a real good ball carrier as, as we've discussed after he catches the ball. Here's, we fail to block the defensive end uh, we're just trying to throw the ball out of bounds, and uh, we just stay in failed. field goal range. Yeah, try to stay in field goal range, just fail to get it out of bounds. Going the other way now at the six. This is an indication of how we play defense most of the day against the run. Great play out of Reggie Pullboar. We've got eight, nine men on the line of scrimmage. Here's a play action. Matt Jones has nobody to throw it to, but you can see how he can scramble and get outside. Big play out of Kevin Sears from Russellville, Alabama. Hey, we're proud to have Kevin. He played a lot in this game. Played really well. Here's uh, look how they're holding uh, Carlos Danzer right there. That's about the only way you can keep Carlos from making a tackle. <laughs> but uh, he had he had another great game. Here we come back on offense, and uh, the Cadillac is back. He uh, he keeps getting those yards after contact, but good blocking out of the offensive line. There's Hugh Nall, who's done a great job of getting this offense back on track. Here we uh, come back on defense, and they throw the ball downfield, and we we miss a coverage. Uh, uh, and by one of our young safeties starting for the first time. Here's a big play out of Carlos Dansby in the backfield. And makes them uh, have to try a field goal and they miss it. And uh, after this play, after this play here's, a, here's good pressure. Again, almost an interception. Good play out of our, our secondary. Good coverage and good pressure. They missed a 35-yard field goal. Now Auburn has fourth and one. Fourth and one, and I decided to go for it. Uh, keep our defense off the field. Just first downs were big in this in this game. It was just like a prize fight. Here's what we call get it play. We had it and throwing the ball down the field. Anthony Nix just a hair away from uh, a touchdown. Good throw by Jason Campbell. Don't underthrow it. Anything else, overthrow it. Here they come back on offense and they run their play action going down the field and uh, Hobbs makes another tremendous play on man coverage. And Again, we've got to get a little bit better pass rush. We Third and seven. Here we jump in what we call bear defense, and uh, we knock it down at the line of scrimmage. I think that's Dexter Murphy. Does a good job, and there were several of those big third down plays. And our defensive line got their hands up. 
And so we come back on the offense. Jason drops back and throws a little slant route to Anthony Mix, makes a big catch for a first down. That was third and six. He was third and three. Third and three. Watch this right here. Accelerate. 21 paid for the. He made the tackle, but he paid for it. Carnell can accelerate as quick as anybody I've ever seen. Now we take him out of the game and put Brandon Jacobs in and, uh, and run a little toss play to the strong side. Good blocking out of both tight ends this side. Nine yard carry and we're just one step away. Miss it on third and one. So many third and ones and fourth downs in this one. Coach. Yeah, there was a lot of a lot of gambling here as we come <laughs> up on third and fourth you and one. You didn't change your spots. No, we didn't change. We had to keep our defense off the field. And there was a big play right. This is a fourth down play right there. Look, he has to get to the that yard line for a first down and our defense holds. And what a big play that was to get the momentum back. Okay, Auburn is uh, three and out, and, but uh, Bliss is pinned them back again with a great punt. Cody did a good job punting. Look, this guy is elusive, and you know he's 6'6", runs a 4 3 40, and just amazing athlete. Third and five. Third and five, and here's a, another one of those plays where we kind of tip it at the line of scrimmage, and we make them punt. We get great field position with 1.30 to go in the half, and this was the momentum of the game. Here's what we come back with a real quick strike to... Jarris McIntyre on a, what we call a gray play. He becomes a great runner after a he, catch. He really does. And here's a draw play from the Cadillac. And watch this acceleration. 22 just thought he had an angle on him and breaks it down to the five-yard line. There's another great runner there. Man, Big play. And here's a play, I tell you, which we just knocked it in. Great call from, from our uh, offensive coaches. And uh, we knock it in for the score up before half and got the momentum at halftime. So Auburn carries a 7 to nothing lead into the dressing room at the half. Here's, here's a look at it again. Here's a look at it again. Look at the great blocking inside. Ooh, uh, the big block from Troy Reddick. And I tell you, our fans were on that end, and they really got fired up along with our band. It's great to see our band there also. Great look at the fans in the band. Touchdown just before the half. Boy, did you need that to go in with a real positive attitude. Well, we really did. And I tell you, it was a great throw and catch to, to uh, Jarius McIntyre to set that thing up. And I'll have to give Steve Ensminger and Hugh Nall credit. Uh, I wasn't for running the ball down there uh, with that with a few seconds left on the clock. But they said, Coach, we can run it and we'll break it up the middle. And sure, sure enough, we did. It was a great blocking by the offensive line, but also a great call by our coaches. And now uh, Auburn comes out with the ball in the third quarter. Let's take a look. Auburn got, uh, gets the ball to start the third. We run a bootleg pass to Ben Obmanu. Good throw and catch. Uh, good blocking downfield. We wanted to keep them off balance in the second half. We knew they were going to start keying on Carnell, so we had to throw the ball a little bit more. Here we have to punt, and there's here's might have been the, one of the plays of the game. Cody Bliss punting all the way down to the two-yard line. Not a very good snap, but a real good punt. And got us in pretty good, pretty good position. Young man is going to make a couple of big ones in the fourth quarter this year, sir. Here, here, this is their drive. They move the ball down to the 38-yard line. Carlos Dansby makes a big play along with Travis Williams. Here's third the quarterback six. draw on third and six. Another big play there by Tommy Jackson. From Going Opelika. for it now on fourth and three. They go for fourth and three, and they go for it all. We had double coverage. Good call by Gene Chizik and uh, knocks the ball down. 88 was her big go-to player. Here we go and throw a, throw a little uh, short pass to Carnell on the outside, just keeping the clock running, trying to keep their defense on the field. That was the strategy of the second half. Here's a fourth down call. We decided to fake it. We'd worked on it all week and it looked like they'd been working on it too. <laughs> so uh, it didn't work. Our defense bowed up and uh, made some big plays. We actually had them in third and 21 after this, I don't know, double reverse pass. And DeMarco McNeil uh, makes the big play. And, but they turn around and execute on the next play. Uh, to get the ball down to close to the 10-yard line. Here's a first down inside the 10. We knock it down. Good play. Here we've got to contain Matt Jones. I tell you, he is really elusive. And here DeMarco McNeil turns his speed on. Karibi Didi comes up and almost gets the interception right there. That was a close play by Junior Rosegreen, who played a heck of a game. Here's third down. Good play by Kevin Hobbs on the crossing route. And uh, they have to get the field goal to make it 7-3 to three with two minutes to go in the third quarter. 25-yard field goal. Auburn with uh, right at the end of the third. Third and, nine. third and third and nine to big play to get us out of the end zone uh, or to their end of the field and move the clock, get us a little bit of breathing room. Back in just a minute with the fourth quarter. Now for the FedEx Air and Ground Game. Brought to you by FedEx. Need reliable express or ground delivery services? Don't worry, there's a FedEx for that. FedEx the ultimate air and ground game of the Auburn Tigers. 
On the ground, Carnell Williams took off in the first quarter for a 44-yard gain, the longest running play of the game. Through the air, junior receiver Silas Daniels delivered on a 29-yard pass from quarterback Jason Campbell early in the fourth quarter. That catch was a key play in the series that led to an Auburn field goal to extend Auburn's lead by seven. That's back for uh, an exciting fourth quarter on the Auburn Football Review. This is fourth and one going for it. This is Fayette Vegas, Coach. Yeah, fourth and one on the first play of the fourth <laughs> quarter. I, I said we just had to keep our defense off the field. We're getting a little bit tired, and, and uh, we played a lot of people on defense. We just had to have that first down. Here comes a play that's uh, been good to us. Just a little boot pass out to Jarris McIntyre. Keep the clock running. Control the football. Uh, give our defense a chance to rest for the last few minutes of the quarter. Huge play here. Watch this throw. I tell you, he threw a bullet in Silas Daniels. And, uh, I tell you, he throws a hard ball when he wants to, and that's a great play by the offensive line to give him time to throw that slant route. Sets up a 34-yard field goal try. Yeah, here's uh, John Vaughn right inside the left upright, and we answered their uh, field goal to put us up by seven again going into the last part of the fourth quarter. Got to hold him now. Here's the... Here's Cobb running up the middle. Good job by our defense. If you notice, we're playing a lot of second-team defensive players, trying to keep everybody uh, fresh. Here's, here comes uh, a great throw by Matt Jones, getting out of the pocket. We just couldn't keep him contained, and uh, they come, kept coming up with big plays. That's a sign of a good football team. Here they come back, and another fake. Here's a long throw. They're trying to get it all at once, and we go up to make the play and almost get the interception, but they call us going over his back, and good call by the official. Uh, gives them another set of downs. And our defense rises to the occasion. Here's the play of the game. Watch Travis Williams come up here and put the, put the ball right there. And Junior Rose Green, the man at the hour, getting the, getting the fumble and gives an opportunity to run some more time off the clock. There's our great Auburn fans who made this long trek to Fayetteville. Great crowd. Here we come back. Cody Bliss punting out of the end zone, and we just told him, Cody, just get it out any way you can. Their kid actually makes a great catch and goes down at the 48-yard line. So. They have one more try here, uh, and they go to their old faithful, Matt Jones. We've got two guys that have a lot of speed to contain him, and we still can't contain him. Here's a fourth down play, and watch Carlos Dansby come over the top. I don't know how he got held on the ball. Big play by Carlos Dansby on defense. They're out of timeouts now. If Auburn can make a first down, they can uh, run the clock out. Yeah, they wasted all their timeouts early, which really gave us an opportunity. Here's Carnell's running with just lay on the ground, run time. Here's a big play. They come after it, and Cody gets the punt away, and now all we have to do is get him on the ground, and they'll have one offensive play, contain him. Good job by our punt team. And Matt Jones elects to run the football with 13 seconds. We were in victory defense, and that's about all they could do. And that was a big play, and a, I tell you, a tremendous win for this football program. And that was a sweet walk across that field. I've done it several times in favor, but that's the first win. This week's Tiger of the Game is presented by your local Toyota dealers. Get the feeling, Toyota. For the second week in a row, the Toyota Tiger of the Game is tailback Carnell Williams. The junior from Atala rushed for 150 yards on 35 carries in the game's only touchdown, an Auburn's 10-7 win over Arkansas and Fayetteville. Carnell Williams, this week's Toyota Tiger. What a great win, uh, Tommy. What a, what a confidence-building win. This is four solid games in a row now. Well, the thing that you need to do in this league is be able to win on the road convincingly, and you can really get a lot of confidence out of that. Today, we will carry more confidence out of this game than any game that we played all year long because... You know, we had six or 7,000 fans here, but uh, we had to really concentrate on what we were doing at the line of scrimmage. Defensively, we knew we had to keep their emotions out of it, and uh, the team and coaches did a good job. This was physical here today, and it will be physical with Mississippi State next Saturday. Oh, they're all going to be physical. Mississippi State next week, and then in Death Valley the week after that. Doesn't get easier. We'll live on this one for another 24 hours, and we'll go back to work. Auburn, Mississippi State, it's a 1.30 kick uh, from Jordan Hare, and it is a pay-per-view game. Go to AuburnTigers.com to get information on how you can get hooked up for it and plenty of time to see it all if you don't have a ticket. And we'll be back here with you next Sunday. Thanks for watching. The following is an Auburn Network production. Center. And the give to Williams. He's around the corner of the five. Look for the end zone. He's in. Touchdown. Tigers. That breaks an Auburn record. Bowling to his right. Will throw downfield. He's got a man, and it is picked off. Will Herring gets it out of bounds of the 36-yard line. The redshirt freshman from Opelika.
Good job. That's the way to go out and put them out early. Heck of a job out of the offense. Defense, good job coming out, fired up. That's the way you play when you play at home. Now, it's time to rumble. We've got to take, their, take this show on the road. This is going to be a big one. It don't get any bigger than what's coming up. We enjoy this one for tonight. Everybody that's injured, get well. Tomorrow we come back and go to work. If you want to go to Atlanta, it starts next week. Great job. Great job. Great job. Great job. Great job. Welcome to Jordan Hare Stadium after a 45 to 13 win over Mississippi State. Coach, what a beautiful day. What a great game over a longtime rival. What a good way to play all your guys, keep them fresh for next week. Well, it was. It was a good game for our fans and for our players. You know, we played two emotional games back to back and in uh, Arkansas and Tennessee, and it was I kind of felt a little letdown in pregame warm-up. I was a little bit worried, but, uh, you know, we came out on both offense and defensive line. We controlled the line of scrimmage. We gave the ball to Carnell, and we turned uh, uh, Carlos Dansby loose on their quarterback, and uh, the rest is history. For the third straight week, uh, just a record-setting performance by a number 24. It's amazing. Amazing. Uh, one of the best running backs I've ever seen, and he's uh, just gets better each week, and he stays stronger and stronger, and you know, he could have he could have set a lot more records today, but, uh, you know, we've got a big one coming up. But it was a great game for everybody. Our offensive line played tremendous. Our uh, defense really, uh, you know, when it counted, you know, showed up. And so uh, it was it was a good win, good win at home, and uh, we're 4-0 in the conference. Let's go to the dressing room and talk to some players. That's all I want to do is get my chance to get in there, you know. This ain't my first chance I done got, you know. It's my first chance I done got those carries, you know. It's kind of tired at first because I'm not used to running the ball, you know, all those many times in a row. So I wanted to get in and pound them, and that's what I did. Oh, yeah, man. That, that, that's a blessing, you know. First of all, I just want to give all credit to the Lord. You know, second of all, my offensive line, I mean, they, they made it easy for us back today. They, they did a great job up front. And, man, we came out and produced today. You know, we just had to want to come out. We just, the main thing, we didn't want to overlook this one. You know, we said we want to come out, take care of business, then we worry about LSU. So, you know, we took care of Mississippi State, and now, you know, we focus on LSU. Carl, Carlos, uh, Carlos did a good job getting the ball listed at corner for me. And, uh, and uh, you know, the ball, he, he ran China route, kind of a corner route, and I just tried to make a break on the ball. Ball game, I know half the people in the stands were thinking, I'm afraid this team might come out uh, a little flat today, but didn't. Well, they got a good offense, and that's what we were concerned about. They've really been throwing the ball well. Kevin Fan, a fifth-year senior, and it, what we wanted to do is, you know, put together some drives on offense, keep him off the field, and uh, when he had the ball, put some pressure on him, and that's what we did. And let's look at the first half. Auburn uh, is on offense for the first play, uh, first series, and uh, they give it up. But again, this defense coach does not give State any encouragement. It's just amazing how fast they started over the last three or four games. And uh, they did get a few yards, but because, hey, they got a good offensive team. We knew that, but uh, we were able to get the ball back very quickly the first few times out. Get ready for a quick strike here. Yeah, here's a good throw and catch to Courtney Taylor. And uh, this might be one of the plays of the year coming up. This is Carnell's long run. Good blocking downfield gives him an opportunity to get to the outside. But sooner or later, you got to make somebody miss, as Carnell says, and there it is right there. And then he's going to have to make a play to the inside and uh, just outruns everybody in the end zone. What a what a great start to, to a game that we really needed to get a fast start in. And then once again, the defense uh, takes charge and gives Auburn the ball back in field position so many times in this first half. Now that, that's what it's all about, it's about field position. And, uh, as you can see right here, we forced it back inside. DeMarco McNeil makes a big play, and their running backs were quick and made some plays. Here's a good hit right here by Carlos Rogers. He's back, playing with a little cash on his hand, but uh, you know it's good to see him back in the lineup. There's a there's a good play inside by our defensive line. We call it the fumble, but they said it was down. DeMarco McNeil probably played one of his better games. See Auburn beginning at midfield again. Here we come back, play action, good throw and catch. Good catch by Brandon Jacobs, and uh, number 30 right here. Doesn't look like he really wants to make that play, but uh, he runs it out of, out of bounds. I tell you what, a big running back uh, in Brandon Jacobs. Here's Carnell's, what, second touchdown, getting it across the goal line. And, uh, you know, we go up, and 
And uh, looks like we got pretty good control of it. But it's about to break one. Yeah, as you can tell, we put our most of our second team defense in the game, and our second team defense is going to play some in, in a lot in these next few games. But they got to learn how to tackle. Uh, here we miss a tackle right there, right there. And I think Nick Turner's a, got a lot of speed. I want you to watch Kevin Hobbs coming from the outside. And, uh, great effort by him. Didn't make the play, but uh, tremendous effort in him trying to get down the field. Here's one of a one of our first few reverses we've run all year long. Set up by our offensive coaches real well. Good blocking downfield by Corey Reddick. And Jarris McIntyre gets it downfield for about a 30, 35 yard gain. 14 to 7, and we've got to make something happen. They've got a little bit of confidence on their side now with the touchdown. Jackie Carroll announced his retirement a couple of days ago. They could have had some encouragement here, but again, the defense gave them none. Right there, you can tell we tackle real well. Carlos Dansby on the tackle and the fullback in the flat. And uh, again, good pressure there. Brett Edmonds, I don't know how many sacks he's got, but he might be leading the team in sacks. Here we come back and uh, hand off inside to Brandon Jacobs. He had 31 carries on this day and over 150 yards. His best outing as a Auburn Tiger. And here he comes back again on the outside. And, you know, for a big guy, he's also got good speed. But I tell you, our offensive line really blocked well on this day. Here we come inside and Parnell breaks it up the middle and gets his third touchdown of the day. And uh, again, the offensive line continues to do the job. And great turnout by the Auburn fans. Continue to, to support this team down the stretch. Watch three straight defensive plays now. This is the way you play the game. Uh, Reggie, uh, Travis Williams on the tackle here, getting penetration. Here's uh, a scramble. Reggie Tullivore on the on the pressure and almost interception by Carlos Stansby. And here's a sprint out and just too many Auburn Tigers throws it over the top. And Will Herring from Opelika uh, High School Bulldogs gets the interception there. Here's Carnell to the outside. A good stiff arm. Albie almost gets run over. I think he's driving his own Cadillac on the outside there. Here we uh, got Carnell up the middle and uh, <laughs> gets escorted in by, by number 22, Williams from maybe, Mississippi State. Maybe he's a distant cousin. His name is Williams. <laughs> well, our fans uh, sitting on their hands a little bit there. We, 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 we've got them sitting down there enjoying this beautiful afternoon. Look at that tackle by Carlos Rogers. I tell you, our tackling gets better in the secondary. Here's a... Uh, Busted handoff. With, I think we, we rattled the, in their quarterback and they put their back up in York for a couple of series. And I tell you what, our, our defense just was going wild. Here's a good coverage by Junior, Junior Rose Green. Good shot of our band there. Just a great day for the Auburn Tigers. Here is the big boy inside, Brandon Jacobs, and he struggles and gets down to the 20 yard line and, and uh, handoff again, getting down pretty close to a touchdown. And, in comes Carnell Williams for for his uh, fourth touchdown of the game. And again, it, it all starts with the offensive line. Here you can see it right here inside. Don't get a lot of movement, but just enough to get it inside. There's Stephen Ross starting for Marcus McNeil in his first start at, at strong tackle. He it, held McNeil out. Held him out. Uh, just a little sore back. Here's a screen pass. And I tell you, our defensive coaches did a great game plan job on, on this team. That, they've been averaging you know, four or five hundred yards a game and uh, and did a good job of uh, corralling the running backs and keeping number eight out of the game early. He got some plays late. Uh, here's a little swing pass and Spencer Johnson, Don Terry Thomas, Tommy Jackson, all of them around the play. Here they come back, throw it back inside to Justin Jenkins, their, their tremendous wide receiver. He coughs it up and the Tigers get the fumble and we're going to turn this into a Real short drive here. We throw it down the field and get it to Ben Oldman. We're just trying to get a field goal right here before the half. Good execution by our offensive line. Entire offense just moving it down the field. He's got the breath knocked out of him there. Here we come back with Jarris McIntyre, as you call him, Phil, the best running back at wide receiver in the country. Yes, Look at this run right here. He sets us up for a field goal. We missed one earlier. Decided to go with Philip Yost. Give him an opportunity to try his luck at field goals. And I tell you, Nailed it in there, 38 to 7 at halftime, and what a great start for the Auburn Tigers. Great time management on that last drive as Auburn takes a 38 to 7 lead. And now for the J&M Tiger Trivia Challenge, brought to you. With Mississippi State, halftime score of 38 to 7. How do you coach a 38 to 7 third quarter coach? Well, what you do is you coach your first and first teamers to say, listen, let's go get one more and so we can play everybody else. And then when everybody else gets in the game, root for them and, and be cheerleaders.
leaders if you're a first teamer and uh, let the guys know that are out there that you know you're behind them and that's exactly what happened you played almost everyone but Albie today coach yeah Albie didn't play but I'm sure he he got hot during the day it was a hot day Albie is a uh, tiger of few words but a lot of action let's look meet Albie Albie University's goodwill ambassador and five-time mascot of the year national champion Albie was born more than 60 years ago through the creative drawings of a Birmingham Post Herald artist Phil Neal is the gentleman who created the cartoon character of Albie in 1959. And that character graced the cover of all our football programs in those days. And in 1979, the SGA Director of Spirits, a student named James Lloyd, who now lives in Anniston, came up with the idea of bringing the mascot to life. From the pages of football programs to a lovable and charming mascot, Albie has captured the true Auburn spirit and the heart of thousands of fans. Albie to the Auburn family means the spirit of Auburn. Um, whenever we're at a football game, no matter if we're winning or losing, Albie still maintains that uh, winning attitude. The spirit's always there. We never lose character. It takes a special individual to embody the Auburn spirit on a full-time basis. Choosing this individual is a complex process. We have selections every spring, and at Auburn, we have a lot of students that show interest. We'll have about 40 that show up at an orientation meeting in January and February. Um, when it comes down to the clinic, we have a week of clinic every night where students get to get in the suit and learn how to walk like Albie and learn what it's like to plan skits. By the end of that week, we're usually left with an average of 15 to 20 students. From a cartoon character in 1959 to a national champion in 2003, Albie is and will always be an integral part of Auburn tradition. Building a winning football team can be a challenging process. For ground delivery services, don't worry, there's a FedEx for that. FedEx, the ultimate air and ground game of the Auburn Tigers. Through the air, it was wide receiver Jarris McIntyre on a 27-yard pass from Jason Campbell late in the second quarter to set up a 42-yard Philip Yost field goal. And on the ground, the top play of the game, an amazing 72-yard run by Cornell Williams in the first quarter. The first of six touchdowns on the day. And that's this week's FedEx air and ground game. FedEx, the ultimate air and ground game of the Auburn Tigers. You've got a big lead. You've played a lot of people. I guess you want to get your first line people off the field as quickly as possible. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a long uh, few weeks, you know, at Arkansas and Tennessee here. Everybody had to play most most every snap, so it was good to get our backups in the game and rest them. We've got a big game coming next week. And it worked out well, as we see now, as we look at uh, the highlights of the third and fourth quarter. And another good start by the uh, Auburn defense to open the quarter with a three and out. Well, our plan was to get the seven more points on the board and let uh, everybody on the bench play, and our defense did their job. They came in, I tell you, really put pressure on the quarterback. Reggie Torbo was all over the field. What a great senior leader he is. He's done a great job for the Auburn Tigers, and players have followed his lead. Here we make him punt, and you can watch this return. I think Trey Smith breaks five tackles. The first guy almost gets him, and that's the most important thing on a punt return. you got to make the first guy miss, and there's two or three guys that Good block by Derek Graves. Uh, another good block by Montavious Pitts and almost gets it down the field. Good return and sets us up for great field position. But Auburn doesn't move it on that. Here's their second possession now of the uh, uh, third quarter. Yeah, our receiver ran a little bit deeper route than he's supposed to. Jason had to double clutch and still got the completion. Here's uh, Brandon four. Jacobs, the outside. Good blocking by Danny Lindsay, Mark Perra, uh, fullback uh, Brandon uh, uh, Johnson. Uh, here's Jake Slaughter now at fullback making a good block uh, for Trey Smith down the field, breaking tackles. Silas Daniels helping block downfield. Our downfield blocking has continued to get better, and it's obviously going to have to uh, stay that way for us to win some games down the stretch. And Rare Auburn fumble. Fumbles. That second fumble is a, uh, by our running backs this year. We've got to we've got to uh, correct that going down the stretch. And here we got good pressure. Demarco McNeil caused the fumble. Uh, on the turnover, and Dexter Murphy from LaGrange, Georgia, makes the recovery. There's uh, Kevin Sears from Russell High School. Uh, now it's time to score some points and get those guys out of the game, let all the backups play. Here, here Jason is on a boot pass. Man, out there, he 
threaded the needle to Courtney Taylor there. Good throw and catch, and in comes the Cadillac for number six. <laughs> uh, we'll get a good block on the outside from Jake Slaughter and Cornell Williams on the sixth touchdown of the, of the game. Auburn record of six touchdowns in the game, only the third player in SEC history to score six touchdowns in the game. And that's a credit to the offensive line. Someday that'll be a trivia question. And he gave them credit to yeah. the Griffin. Who was the offensive line to give Cornell six touchdowns in one game? Well, now we come back, we've got to sustain something with the backups. You know, we've got to get better here. Good pressure, and we get to the quarterback there, and, and uh, uh, Tim Duckworth, who's a Mississippi native. Here's a Don A. Young, on one of our safeties, who gets a lot of playing time, knocks the ball down. Fourth down now. Watch this play. Fourth down and 13, and Rashad Gilliard knocks the ball out and turned the ball over on downs. Good, good job by our defense. Here we come back with our backup offensive uh, players except for Brandon Jacobs he's not like a backup I tell you uh, here's a good throw and catch by Mississippi State and that's not a backup for them he's one of the better ones in the country Justin Jenkins going for two they go for two and throw the alley watch Montavious Pitts gets up and knocks the play down Montavious is going to be a good player for us from Lochapoca High School here comes Brandon Jacobs and uh, uh, you know the other team hates to see a cleanup guy like him yeah. I mean he's of course, he's not a cleaner, but he's, he's going to be a great player for us. And look at this run. Breaks it down the outside. 182 yards. Good Jim. stiff arm. See, he uh, gets better and better, and we wrap it up. And good good victory for us. 4-0 in the league, and uh, we're making some headway. And Jackie Sherrill's last game against us, and uh, we're, we're just glad to get the victory against him. This week's Tiger of the Game. physically coach yep we didn't get anybody hurt and uh, we held out a couple of players that will be 100 percent next week ronnie brown marcus mcneil so it uh couldn't end up in a better situation for us health wise and now it's saturday night in tiger town as they like to say well it's it's gonna be a tough one and uh you know we i guess we're the we're the two now that's got to beat up on each other to see who goes uh uh to play old miss a little later on to to have a chance to go to atlanta so it's all kind of shaping up now Everybody's kind of taking positions, and we're in a pretty good position. We're 4-0, and but we've got four tough uh, conference games left. It's been a long time since the Tigers were 4-0 in the SEC. Let's see if they can go 5-0 and next week. It is a 6:45 kick from Baton Rouge, and we'll be back here on Sunday with the replay with the coach. Thank you for joining us. Pass out the flat, picked off by Hobbs, 15, 10, 5, he's gone, touchdown Auburn, Kevin Hobbs, the easy catch and run in the end zone. Half a little bit. They block it at the 5, ball still on the ground, near the goal line, into the end zone. Let's go, yes, I think he blocked it, and I think he recovered it in the end zone for the Auburn touchdown. Good, good job for everybody. That's fun when that, that many people get to play. Good job. Three games left. The game's on. We got two of them at home. Starts next week. The boys come to town and they'll be ready to play. They'll be there undefeated. They won today by three points, 43 to 40. It's time we got ready to play and play at home and play the best we can play. It'll be a dog fight. So come ready to go. All right, let's sing. <laughs> Oh, Coach, a senior day, homecoming, but more importantly, a pretty easy day for your team. Well, we needed that. We needed everybody to play. You know, it's been a long month of October and very physical, very mental. And this week in practice, we kind of cut back a little bit because we had lost that edge. And I think with a game like this to where, you know, we didn't really have to concentrate every snap, got all the younger players in, let them play, won by a big margin. I think it was good for everybody. I think we should also say, because the, the game was not on television, that 
You played everybody. There was no effort to run up a score. Today. Oh, no. It was 45 nothing at halftime, and most of our backups got to play even in the first half. That usually doesn't happen in a major college football game, but we played well, and they made some mistakes, and our kicking game caused some turnovers, and we even scored once on, on defense. Uh, Hobbs intercepting the pass and running back in the end zone. That's the first force this year, so scored in a lot of different ways. A lot of different players played, and got off to a good start, and it's a good finish. Let's go to the dressing room, talk to some of the players. You know, we had to put in a couple of uh, blocks this week, you know, and show the next three games uh, coming up. We want to give them something to work at, and uh, worked out for us today. Yeah, you know, we want to come out, uh, we got a passing game going early, you know, try to get the team that we're about to play coming up, you know, opportunity to see something different because we want to throw the ball in the next three, next three weeks, you know, keep it more balanced, you know, keep defense off their feet because we're about to face three tough teams. We just came out and played hard football, you know. We, we focused on starting over this week, so we're going to start over. Hopefully, this is the way we'll go. All up three sides of the ball, special team, offense, and defense. But hopefully this this new Albert Tigers for the next six weeks. Oh, it's gonna take a lot of effort and um, a lot of concentration. We're gonna know, we know we're gonna try to throw the ball and they're gonna come in with a run. They on a five game winning streak in SEC. Oh, it's gonna be tough, but we're gonna be ready for them. Yeah, uh, he throws the ball. Uh, Eli throws it a lot, so uh, hopefully I'm in the right position to make a lot of plays next week and uh, the rest of the rest of the second day also. So. Is, uh, this was the 300th game played in this old stadium, Coach. Nice old stadium, I tell you. There's a lot of memories here. Yeah, and a lot of memories. great football players played here. And, and we always have some coming back. You know, it always brings back memories and a lot of great fans sitting in these seats. You wanted to throw the ball today. And uh, I guess it was a dream come, tr come true. Uh, Jason comes out and hits his first pin. <laughs> well, that's, that's the way you want to do it. That's right. We want to do that every week. But, you know, we want to throw it downfield you know we've been throwing five six eight ten yard routes and we came out today and threw well early and kind of loosened them up we, we really didn't want to run the ball a whole lot we know we can run the football we wanted to prove to ourselves that we could balance this offense up and looking at the final stats 241 rushing 240 passing so pretty good day balancing it up let's get on with it first half highlights and the tiger walk by the way it was homecoming coach and Dion Aviki. I hope I got that name right because it's the homecoming queen. She's from Auburn. A lot of people come back for homecoming and uh, also had senior day. Yes. All of our seniors went out and had their parents and what a beautiful day for all these festivities. Here we come out and uh, the quarterback runs an option play and uh, our defense is getting pretty good at stopping the option. Speed really is what deters an option offense and uh, we've got a lot of speed at linebacker. Here we come and Jason Campbell is one, one of his first Completions in a what ten in a row, I think. Ten in a row, yeah. And uh, make some plays. Look very quickly here. Carnell breaks tackles and goes 72 yards for our first touchdown. Good blocking up front. You know we wanted to have a balanced offense in, in this uh, game, and uh, it was uh, fairly well balanced as the game went on. This is about as fast scoring as you can imagine. That was a three-play drive there. Now they're going to get it right back. Yeah, we come back and. Uh, Cause a turnover here, the bootleg pass, and throws it right to uh, Don Terry Thomas, makes his uh, interception, and turnovers are what count, you know, in games late in the season, and as we go in the next few games, we're going to have to continue to create those. A lot of enthusiasm on defense. Two pretty fair linebackers yeah, there. Two good linebackers, a great crowd, and here we come back, and we're going to throw the ball deep, as we said earlier, and here's a good throw and catch to Jarris McIntyre, but uh, protection up front. We had time to throw the ball, threw it on time. Good throw, good catch, and we're starting to pull away. Here, here we're back on defense. Good pressure by Spencer Johnson, one of our seniors, and another senior, Carlos Dancer, knocking the ball loose. And again, it was a great day for senior day. All the seniors got to play and, and uh, have some excitement. Here's another throw and catch deep down the field to Jarris McIntyre. They call a pass interference, but again, we had great protection from our offensive line. They've had 100 yards of reception. Yep, here's, there. here's another good run for by the Cadillac up the middle, creating big holes for the offensive line. Good blocking downfield by Ben Overmanu. And here we come back on the slant to Ben and good throw and catch on the man coverage. And the Cadillac over the top gets hit pretty good here. We got the ball across the plane of the goal line and another touchdown. Here we come. 40 into the game, three touchdowns. Already. Yeah, but you know they were very interesting offense. There's a big hit by Will Herring. They did a lot of different things, play action, option, shotgun. I don't know how you do all that, that stuff and, and uh, do things correctly every snap. Here's a good play by our defense, swarming the ball. 
There's a little double pass. They were going to throw it back to the quarterback. Derek Graves makes a good play, getting up the field. And it takes a lot of time to get that play off. So they were trying to trick us. Here we come back. And still in the first quarter. Play action. Throw it down the field to Courtney Taylor. He makes a good catch. And again, we want to try to get the ball down 15, 20 yards down the field. But it all starts with protection. Here's Ronnie Brown in the game. On one of his, I think, four carries of the game. He had four carries. Carnell had seven. And... Uh, Again, we just wanted to get things going and try to get started for next week. Start the second game. quarter and kick the field goal. Kick the field goal to hell. Let's run a little screen pass and didn't work. And uh, on the goal line, here's the field goal by Philip Yost, who, who really got tired of the game. I've never been around a kicker that gets tired. Here's a great <laughs> great play by Kevin Hobbs. Uh, again, they throw the ball over the receiver's head and throw it right to the our corner, and we score on defense. Strangest situation through here. The defense stayed on the field most of the second quarter. With most the of the second quarter. Here's one of our blocks. Justin Fesco blocks it, tries to pick it up. We kick it around, fumble it around, goes in the end zone, and ends up falling on it for a <laughs> touchdown. I, I tell you, Justin Fesco is a story of, of, of an Auburn player that comes here, walks on, makes, him, makes himself a success in the classroom and with his teammates, and I tell you, we have really enjoyed him being part of this program for the last five years. Strange as it seems, that was his first touchdown. Though. First touchdown of all the times he's been on that practice field. Here's a good defensive play uh, by our defense, breaking the pass up. Here's a quarterback draw, Kyle Deseron, one of the young players. And here we come, and uh, Donna Young blocks another punt. We go into this game saying on defense we're going to create something to happen because we hadn't done it, and, and we did that today and, and scored and blocked several punts. Here's uh, Anthony Mix with a throw from Jason Campbell. Here's a bootleg pass. Jason could have run it in, but uh, throws it to Cooper Wallace. And uh, we get another score on the board. Again, that's very, one of very few plays that our offense had in the second quarter. You know, uh, that's the way you score 73 points is with a turnover. Yeah, right? turnovers and create things. Yeah. Here's a good return by Trey Smith. And again, we wanted to work on this because we'd had so much trouble last week. But... It was a good play by our special team. 45 nothing half. Time now for the j and Halftime at Auburn with a 45 to nothing lead, but uh, you didn't wait to the half to know that it was time to uh, start moving in uh, secondary people. No, we wanted to know that we had the ball game in hand. Our plan was to try to, as soon as we possibly could, get all the backups in, let our guys rest a little bit. The guys have been, been playing 70, 80 snaps a game. And uh, that's exactly what happened. Uh, and I could also tell, you know, through the first half, we didn't uh, concentrate as well when the score got kind of lopsided. So it's good to put those backups in. Jerry's McIntyre has developed into Auburn's top receiver this year. Great after the catch running the football. Here's a look at uh, number 81. Fire. Caught. At the 25. Still on his feet. McIntyre to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, 5. Gone! Touchdown! It was this great catch and run that gave Allman its first touchdown of the year. From that moment on, the Tiger passing game has shown steady improvement. Jarrett McIntyre, now a senior, has become Auburn's top wideout, making a name for himself as a runner as much as a receiver. Uh, every time I touch the ball, I just try to, you know, do what's best for the team and just get yards after the catch. You know, when we get our opportunities, we want to uh, do whatever we got to do, you know, to get in the end zone or, or, or give us positive yards for the offense. That he is a great runner comes as no surprise. His dad, Cedric McIntyre, was an outstanding running back in the 70s. Number 11 on Auburn's all-time rushing list. Now a very successful businessman in Tampa, Cedric rarely misses a game. I think Cedric's living a lifelong dream, too, watching you play. Yeah. Did he ever talk to you? Yeah, I talk to him almost every day. You know, he just tells me to stay focused and, and do the things that I need to do to get better and better as the days go along. So I talk to him every day about it, and he talks to me about his days here. So I talk to him a lot about just everything. So, you know, he's a good, good influence to me. Auburn is a total family affair for the McIntyres. Jarris' mom, Geraldine, is an Auburn graduate, and his twin sisters, Ashley and Christy, are Auburn students. Yeah, this family's cool. Uh, mother, father, aunties, sisters, cousins. So it's a family school, you know, and they, they support me 100%. So it's, it's, it's good, you know, being an Auburn Tiger. With his speed and his emergence as Auburn's top receiver, pro football is now a good possibility. His dad played for a short while for the Atlanta Falcons. So Jarrett hopes to make it a McIntyre family tradition. Even though you change quarterbacks, 
You wanted uh, you wanted Josh to throw the ball some and balance the offense. Oh too. yeah, yeah. The, you know, no matter what what happens when you put your second team in, you want to keep running your offense. They've got to build confidence. They've got to learn from mistakes that they make and build confidence in the in the successes. So we we were definitely going to go out and do the same things we were doing. We're just doing it with different people. Got some good looks on special teams, especially block punts. Block too. punts had three block punts. That might be a record. I know it is for me in a game, but. Uh, uh, you know, we were going into the game to do that. When we, we were going to put pressure on punters because what's happened is we have been so much of a return team, people have gotten down the field so quick and, and caused some problems for us. So this week we said, hey, let's go block some punts and let people think about that for the next few games. Okay, let's look at some numbers you don't often see as we get into the second half. Josh Sullivan and mostly backups in on offense. Uh, that's right. Here's Marquise Gunn, one of our true freshmen uh, from uh, Alex City, Benjamin Russell High School, makes a good pass deflection here. But they do move the ball down the field, and uh, this is their score of the game. Uh, Lamel Ages on the on the defense there. We got to play a little bit better pass defense when we put our second team. But we did empty the bench and played a lot of guys. As a matter of fact, we played everybody that was eligible to play that we weren't redshirting. And here we've got uh, Devin Arumashu back returning kick. That's a good kick return. He got a hold on that ball, though. He got it knocked out there. We get on it. Uh, some people say, you know, why throw the ball, you know, when you've got this much of a lead? But, uh, you know, we still have to work up with these second groups and third groups and what they do in practice. And, and you got three big games coming yeah, up. Yeah, sooner or later, these guys are going to be the starting Auburn Tigers, and you want to keep working on what you do best. And uh, so uh, you know, we come in, we run our entire offense, and there's big Brandon Jacobs loping into the end zone with his, uh, I think, two touchdowns of the game. But it was good to see all of our backup offensive linemen get good playing time and our defensive linemen. Here they run the ball. Mayo style knocks the ball loose and recovers it. Big play by our defensive group. Uh, Need to play hard. Here we come and run a bootleg pass. Uh, Cole Bennett with the, with the completion for uh, the one-yard one yard line. And then uh, Trey Smith with his uh, touchdown for the night. Good blocking up front for the offensive line. Here they run the option play and boot it around a little bit. Tommy Jackson knocked it loose. Again, it's good to see us around. The, here we block another punt. And uh, coming from the outside. John A. Young on the uh, fumble uh, recovery. Here's big boy Brandon coming through the middle again. And again, good blocking up front. Get another touchdown. A lot of highlights in a game like this, Bill. But again, it's a lot of good uh, experience and a lot of young guys that never get into the game. The great thing is uh, those first guys are going to have to play so much next week. They watch them. In the next three weeks. And here's the interception by Gerald Williams, a walk-on from the state of Alabama. Makes a good play here. Here's Jamoka Ramsey, a walk-on. that has been with us for a couple of years. Gets his first significant playing time. Josh threw the ball well. He did throw the ball well. Here's good blocking. Trey Smith again uh, for, for another run for a touchdown. A lot of highlights, but it was good to see all these guys get to play and our fans enjoy homecoming and senior day. So a lot of good seniors have put a lot of time in and we're glad to get this win. Now we've got to get to work for next week's uh, conference uh, game. Time now for the FedEx Air and Ground Game. Brought to you by FedEx. Need reliable express or ground delivery services? Don't worry, there's a FedEx for that. FedEx, the ultimate air and ground game of the Auburn Tigers. Through the air, senior wide receiver Jarris McIntyre scored on a 32-yard pass from Jason Campbell in the first quarter. And on the ground, junior tailback Carnell Williams took off for 72 yards and a touchdown in the first quarter for Auburn's first points of the day. And that's this week's FedEx air and ground game. I guess most importantly, you got through this game with uh, no injuries and uh, you got a good workout with your first people and now you go into this uh, stretch run. Yeah, we do and playing the team that's only un only one undefeated in our conference, Ole Miss, and they've been playing well, averaging 40 points a game, got the top quarterback in the country, got some great receivers, we'll have our hands full. So we've got to come, come together as a team, play well on offense, defense, and special teams, but we're playing at home and that's a big, big difference. And it is a 2.30 start on CBS. The Auburn Network will be on the air two hours prior to game time, and we'll be back here next week uh, with a, a replay of the game for you. Thank you.
following is an Auburn Network production. Carnell Williams at the tailback. They'll hand it off to Williams. Five, cuts it inside. 30, 35, 40. There goes Cadillac. To the 50, to the 40, to the 30, to the 20, to the 15, 10. Go crazy, Cadillac. Go crazy. Touchdown, Auburn. Don't nothing feel good better than that, guys. That's a heck of a job. Give yourself a hand. <laughs> Seniors, it's been a long year. We still got one more to go. But that's the one that counts right there. That's the one that counts. You're three for four out of those guys. And that was, that was more than a six-point win. You dominated the game. They played hard. That's the iron bowl. Everybody plays hard. You made the plays. Appreciate all your hard work. You did a great job. You fought hard. You know, there are times out there it looked like it looked a little bit glim, but I saw our seniors on the <laughs> sideline stand up and say, hey, this ball game ain't going to be taken away from us. Proud of every one of you. That's what it's about. You gave a big win to the Auburn family. All those people out there appreciate it. That's the one that they want to win. Of all the things, the bad things that's happened to us this year, that's the one that you want to win for. Because that's what it's all about. It's about family, the Auburn family. And I know they appreciate it. Seniors, thank you. Everybody else, thank you. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Tommy Tuberville. Brought to you by your Alabama Coca-Cola bottle. Coca-Cola, real. Colonial Bank, the bank of choice of the Auburn Tigers. Right after a big Iron Bowl win for the Tigers, let me shake your hand, Coach. What a game. Well, congratulations well, on a third Iron Bowl win and the first one here, by yeah, the way. Three out of four, and I tell you, that, that, that one's for the fans and our players because uh, you know how much this means to everybody involved. And our players laid it on the line. Our coaches did a great job. But I'm going to tell you, as you said, this, this old place was rocking tonight. It was indeed. And you know, it was such a dominating effort. Uh, you didn't get as many points as you should have. This could have been a real big game. Well, it could have been a rout. But, you know, we, we just didn't make the plays when they gave us opportunities. And we were just a little bit unlucky. But we kept plugging back and making it. And, and uh, our, our defense kept, kept uh, you know, the offense on the field most of the time in the first half. But I tell you, you know, just all three phases, kicking game, offense, and defense, at one time or another, made enough plays for us to win the game. Let's go to the dressing room. You know, people just don't understand how big this game is. You know, it's, it's huge. You know, we was walking through Tiger Walk. I think that might have been the biggest Tiger Walk I've seen since I've been here. And it's been some big ones. And, you know, for that to, for us to see all them fans out there still supporting us, even through the tough season that we've had, you know, that feels great. It's an honor playing this ball game. Uh, you know, you know, last two years, I done missed out on it, but I done been on the sideline and I felt the atmosphere. But, you know, for, for me to play in this game, the game that I don't watch, grew up watching my whole life, real special to me you know I, I, I just want to thank god for what he done done for me and what 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 he gonna do for me in the future oh man we're playing for everybody man we're playing for our family we're playing for ourselves man we just we just trying to eat good on thanksgiving man this, this is what this game all about man eating good on thanksgiving you know what i'm saying your family can go to work and they gotta worry about nothing man they ain't gotta worry about nobody talking talking about them, talking bad to them and that so um, like i said we just did it for our family did it for our coach did it for our university man after Auburn's big 28 to 23 win over Alabama, I can't remember as many momentum changes and, and such a fast start in a long time. Well, we started fast on offense and defense, and again, we just dominated the first first half. And I was a little concerned, you know, with, you know, in the first half when we weren't making the plays because good teams fight back, and and they're a good football team. They fought back, uh, but the first half, as we'll see here, we made some tremendous plays on offense and defense and kicking game. Don't miss the opening play. Let's take a look. Tribute to the fans, Coach, one of the great Tiger Walks. Well, it's, it's not a better tradition in college football, but here we come right out the shoot. We get the ball open and drive. First play, Carnell breaks it. Just watch Jarris McIntyre on this block. He just outruns everybody. Uh, gets in. Look at Ben Obenu come up. Great effort and tremendous blocking by our offensive line and obviously a great start for the Tigers. Second longest run in Iron Bowl history. Unbelievable run. And again, it's a great way to start and uh, got our fans involved and you can see our players and coaches are really excited here we come back and they've got the ball and that's carlos dansby makes a good stop 
along with Don Terry's Thomas. Third and one. What's this? Third and one, and Junior Rose Green brings him down about a half a yard short, and we force him to punt. Great defensive play and uh, just tremendous effort out of out of all of our defensive guys. One of those 60-degree wedges right here, Coach. Had good backspin, put us in the hole, and uh, you're going to see this play right here. We run a zone play, hat on the hat, and uh, they do a good job slant. We don't block Anthony Bryant right there, and he gets us for a safety, and it's one of those things. you got to come off the ball. We're a little late coming off the ball. Here we they get come back. back on a free kick. Free kick and uh, get the ball to 50 bar defense. Doesn't, doesn't let them get anything. And uh, they punt. We get the ball back, and here's our second touchdown. Watch this, Ben. Oh, watch, watch the speed out of Jarris McIntyre and Ben. Just great plays, great effort. And, uh, you know, we've been looking for some breaks like this. And he doesn't block. He just shields, which is the right thing to do. Right exactly. Or just get in their way and allow, and allow the... The, the runner to score. Here we come back. Uh, just great pursuit out of Carlos Dansby. Here's a drop back. Another pressure by Carlos. DeMarco McNeil always got better hands than that. DeMarco <laughs> usually catches those hard ones. Those easy ones are tough, but uh, <laughs> yeah. great game out of DeMarco. He, I tell you what, he was more excited than anybody uh, around after this game. Here's a big catch by Courtney Taylor. It was Jason Sharp, Coach. He, was, he sharp. was sharp, and I tell you, he didn't. Here's, here's one he took a little bit of a chance with, but sometimes you got to try to force it in to make a play, and Silas Daniels had one of his better games as an Auburn Tiger. Here we Look come. blocking. Yep, here we come back and blocking downfield. Cooper Wallace, Mark Para, Monrico Crittington, and here we make a field goal. I knew it was going to be a good night <laughs> when we knocked this one through. I tell you, John Vaughn nailed it through and uh, gave us a 16-point lead. Only eight minutes into the game. Eight minutes into the game and not much score from here on to the second half. And here's reverse. Look at Carlos Dansby string it out and make a perfect tackle and then try to knock the ball out. That's what you call a football player right there. Here, here's yeah. Travis Williams on a little stunt inside. Big stop there. And uh, come back again. Here's Ronnie Brown. Watch Ronnie. If he just keeps his feet moving, gets up. And, you know, you're not down if you fall on a player. You have to hit the ground. So uh, uh, just keep moving your feet. Good run by, by Ronnie and Blocking the offensive line. Watch this play. Third and 17. Watch him drill it into Silas Daniels. Bam, right there. Make the guy miss, get the first down. We had four of six third down conversions in the first half, and that was that was big for us. Just holding to keep penalty control. stopped that one, though. Yeah, we had a couple of holding penalties. Good tackle by Kevin Hobbs. DT. Reggie Torbor played a terrific game. Here we got pressure. Brody's a good scrambler. A uh, good job of breaking down right there and good pursuit out of, a, out of our defensive line. Stopped him short of the first, and they had to punt. Punt with five minutes to go in the in the first half, and we put Carnell back. This is a great return right here. Watch him. Makes the guys miss. Good blocking downfield. Uh, we had a couple of breakdowns in the kicking game, but I tell you what, this was one that just got us out of a hole a little bit, got us out plus yardage, and a good return. Crazy series coming up. Had two drop passes for touchdowns. Yeah, watch this. Great throw catch. Good read by Jason. Ball just pops out of his hands, and they recover right there, and, uh, you know, just one of those things that happens. And now with a couple of seconds remaining at the end of the half, Brody tries a uh, Hail Mary. Long pass. Junior Rose Green gets his first interception. 18-2 to at the half. A big Auburn win over Alabama in this Iron Bowl at 18-2 to with the lead at the half, which is kind of strange scored. Yeah, it was a strange score. We... We, uh, you know, had to go for two, and we got the, the uh, safety in the end zone. But, again, we played well, but we didn't take advantage of some opportunities. But, uh, again, I, I, I knew that uh, if we'd come out second half and play like we'd been playing, we wouldn't lose. But, obviously, they're a good team, and they fought back. With all that was going on this week, uh, I know you called on your seniors for some leadership and get this team ready to play. Well, anytime you have adversity, your seniors have to step up. It can't be the coaches. It's got to be your seniors. And these guys have gone through a lot of big ups and downs since they've been here. They've been here four or five years. But uh, I tell you what, they're not a better group in the country, and uh, I'd go to war with them any day. An Auburn Network report on this year's senior class. Thirteen seniors will be leaving the Plains at the end of this football season. These seniors mark the first Auburn class that Tommy Tuberville and staff can call their own. Each senior will remember and cherish their time as an Auburn Tiger. The thing I remember most about playing at Auburn is just playing with my, um, my friends. You know, um, the guys in the senior class that I came in with, they, they be my friends for the rest of my life. You know, we just have a bond that no one can ever take from us, no matter the wins and the losses. Uh, we just always be real close. My plan is out to football is on my own business and sell computer software. My plan is out to football. I um, complete my degree and um, um, possibly try for the NFL. 
Uh, my highest achievement at Auburn was beating Alabama twice, and hopefully a third time this weekend. My, uh, my grandpa got me started home when I was, uh, my brother and I were about four, and uh, you know, every day we're off during the summer uh, going home fishing. And, in the wintertime, uh, you know, but once hunting season starts, we're going deer hunting. Playing for Auburn has meant to, uh, meant to me uh, a lot, learning integrity, growing from a boy to a man, making friends that I'll never forget in my life, and, you know, having coaches that care about me. And uh, and I know, you know, I will be an Auburn man, and, you know, I'm just happy to be here, and, and I was blessed. I remember most of my time at Auburn, um, you know, every Saturday being able to go through the Tiger Walk with our great fans and um, this great atmosphere with this university, being able to play at Jordan Hare Stadium, you know, each and every Saturday in the fall, you know, th those would be the thing I remember about being a football player here at Auburn. My achievement was really just to come here and just to play for Auburn. That's, that's one of my greatest achievements that I have, and I'm, a, I'm always sure of that. So it's just one just coming here and playing for these, with these great guys. So that's one of my biggest achievements. Just getting an opportunity to play with Auburn, man, it's, it's been big for me coming from where I came from. Um, it was a blessing, you know what I'm saying? And just, like I said, getting an opportunity for fans, to have a lot of fans behind me support me. Uh, man, it feels good, man. It's, it's the best feeling I've ever had in my life. My family's, uh, all of them's in the seafood industry. Uh, you know, most of them shrimp, and uh, I've shrimped all my life. I remember most about Auburn, the winning tradition that was established here, and how we tried and in some ways succeeded on keeping it going. My highest achievement at Auburn, uh, I think it's been uh, not only being able to make the team, but uh, play uh, for four years. Well, playing for for me meant a lot to me. Um, going out here and uh, fellowshipping with the fellas and uh, playing with the A.U. only helped me play against Alabama, winning against Alabama. But uh, most importantly, just making new friends. Building a winning football team can be a challenging process. You need the best players and coaches, a great game plan, you need all the right ingredients, and Golden Flake is the prime ingredient for all. On the ground, it was the game's first play from scrimmage. Tailback Carnell Williams took the handoff and didn't stop running until 80 yards later, giving Auburn a lead it would never relinquish. And through the air, with 8.51 in the first quarter, Jason Campbell hit wide receiver Ben Obumanu, who took it in for 64 yards and a score. And that's this week's FedEx Air and Ground Game. FedEx, the ultimate air and ground game of the Auburn Tigers. So, what did you say coming out for the second half? Obviously not a whole lot, <laughs> you know, because they, huh? they ran the opening kickoff back. But, uh, you know, it's, it, this was a game of big plays. And, you know, I told our team to just treat it nothing to nothing, go out the second half and see if we could beat them in, for two halves and not just the entire game. But, uh, you know, we had, they came out and played hard, and we did too. And uh, fortunately for us, we made enough plays to win the game. Big emotional and uh, momentum swing to start with, but the Tigers got it back as we look at the second half. Coach, this is not how you want to start the second half. No, it's not. I don't think of anything that worse could have happened is us to, number one, kick the ball this short with the wind behind us. But watch, we miss tackles right there. We get out of our lanes. Trey Smith misses a tackle. Got a little hole right there on, on Donna Young. But uh, you got to get off those blocks. And they just made a good play. And uh, I tell you what, the, the bleeding started right here. And for about five or six minutes, uh, a little bit of concern on the Auburn sideline. Auburn is three and out, and they drive right down the field on an eight-play drive again. Eight-play drive, and Shad Williams punches it over. I'm glad he's gone. I tell you, he's a good football player. He is. Here we come back, and I thought this drive right here kind of summed it all up. Uh, look at that run by Carnell. I tell you what, they, we're going to hate to see see the that he leads. There's a good kick right there of uh, Trace, uh, John Vaughn. So important answer right there. Yeah. I thought that stopped the bleeding, and we kind of got our – feel back again got the momentum back here's a excellent excellent play out of our, our defense stopping the bootleg forcing the quarterback to run second and seven second and seven and toss sweep and uh you can't run lateral on this defense very often if you do you're pretty good it, it, here's a another good run out of carnell and again watch how he keeps his feet moving you know one person doesn't bring bring him down i tell you he's He's a difference. Here, here he comes up the middle, or this is Ronnie Brown. One of his carries gets a first down. And uh, we're getting ready to go into the fourth quarter, and we're ahead five points. But the still ball game is still still close. Here's a great play from uh, from their defense that Jason throws into double coverage, and he's got to read that. It's too deep coverage. You can't throw into that. But, you know, that's one of, one of the very few mistakes he You're made right. in the game. You're right. He was just superb. He too. was a absolutely outstanding. And here's... Good pressure by the defensive front. Slapped the ball down. 
Brett Edens. Brett Edens had a real good game, and uh, here we come back. Uh, yeah, I thought this was probably the turning point. Will Herring set on the curl route and got the interception, and here we go, moving the ball down the field, kind of put the ball game away. Third and 17. Third and 17, and look at that play by Jerris McIntyre and Jason Campbell. Just, just going on the run that to, way. To his left is, yeah. is amazing. Here's a touchdown run. They call us a holding right here. If you see the right hand of the screen, but uh, call it back. We still got a good gain out of it. Still moving the ball. Probably was good that it happened because we just run more time off the clock. Right. Right. Here's Ronnie on the left side. Great blocking by, by Troy Reddick, Marcus McNeil. Here's Carnell over the top for the touchdown and gave us a pretty comfortable lead with seven minutes to go. He probably went over the 200-yard mark about up somewhere along in here. Yep. What a performance. Great turnout by the fans. And, but here they come back and... Uh, and we get great pressure. Brett Edens again on the sack from Trinity High School. Here, we, here we've got a uh, big play out of uh, Montavian Pitts. Malocha Polka High School. Great job on Montavious on the... Here they go. Throw a pump and go on the uh, outside receiver. But the receiver that caught the ball was turning up at the line of scrimmage before the snap. Good call by the official. But we're very lucky there. Here we come back. And, and uh, on their last drive, we get them in several situations in fourth down. But we just can't put them away. Here they come back. Watch this play. I, I tell you what, uh, things going your way, they're going your way, and uh, you know. But they're hitting, made the play. Here's the onside kick, and they had two mistakes. Number one, you can't be offside. Number two, you can't touch the ball before it goes ten yards, and they did both. And uh, this is a, when you're playing the Iron Bowl. This is the prettiest formation in in, <laughs> in the game. A Taking a knee, and it was a great victory for the Auburn fans and this football team. And uh, we're excited. We won the last three out of four, and that's big for this program. This week's Tiger of the Game is presented by your local Toyota dealers. Get the feeling, Toyota. This week's Toyota Tiger of the Game is tailback Carnell Williams. The junior from Atala rushed for a season-high 214 yards on 26 carries and two touchdowns in the 28-23 victory over Alabama. It was his sixth 100-yard rushing game of the season. Carnell Williams, this week's... Really successful season for a team that's gotten very used to big seasons, but coach winning the Iron Bowl won't hurt. No, I tell you what, winning the Iron Bowl is what I came here for that's because, right. uh, you know, it's a, it's a game where everybody, you know, looks forward to all year long. We have had some ups and downs. We're going to continue to play this year. We'll have, we'll have a bowl game for these seniors and all these players. But uh, it's great to finish up on this positive note against your in-state rival. Uh, so, so what's the uh, schedule now? Yeah, we have next week off. Uh, players get to go home and have the first few days off they've had off since August and we'll come back and uh, evaluate the situation where we're going to play in a bowl game and then we'll start practicing uh, probably in two weeks and go from there. Have a happy Thanksgiving coach. I want to thank all of our many sponsors for their loyal support and to thank you for being with us this football season and we'll be back next year with another Auburn football review. Thank you for watching.